All right. Welcome back. Y'all are Robert it. Smith. <laughs> <laughs> Not Come yet. Come on, where yet? Come on. <laughs> Not yet. Not you yet. never know. I, I mean, we've been saying it for the past four years. You never know who we know. You just never know. And uh, we're getting close to knowing pretty much everybody at this point. <laughs> Any, for real. Anything's possible. When Anything's I was talking possible. to Weezy last week, she's like, they always use in the studio now. I'm like, I know. If they're using the studio, boy, there's some guests, and it, it was a guest. So I want to say congrats on that. That's amazing. Shout out to WTF Studios. Yes. yes. That is our home away from home. Yes. I know that I know you're an investor in the LA location. We used yep. we actually Irv Gotti interview going crazy. Irv Gotti's interview is going crazy. Uh all of like different hip hop sites are like picking it up. Uh so that's that's pretty dope. And we filmed that in the LA uh studio yep. and um thank we, you ian yeah <laughs> happy to uh, yeah no no for sure let me plug that real quick so if you're if you're a podcast or you're looking to produce content if you're in new york or la wtf studio is definitely a dope place that's where we film out of that's where well we film out of there sometimes but um charlamagne brilliant idiots they film out of there a bunch of other people film Neil out of Brennan there so. was there with david letterman recently so Yes, he was. Yeah. So we got we got our home studio and then we got our city studio whenever we're in the city. And um, they do the audio. They do the visuals for you. They send it to you. Um, it's good lighting. Um, so yeah, <laughs> it's, it's real easy. You just go in there and just and just talk and then they, they package it up and it's very reasonable prices. So yeah, check it out. Yeah. And if you're in the L.A. area, make sure you check it out as well. It's uh, in uh, Hollywood, correct? West Hollywood. Yep. West Hollywood. Yeah. Same thing, one stop yep. shop, get in there, record. Don't even have to worry about anything. The audio is done for you, the episodes are clipped up for you, and it's emailed to you. Just make sure you download within the first 30 days, please. Uh, this is do not an ad, ad, but it might, it, might, it might as well be. Wheezy, cut the check. Hey, Alex, for real. what are we doing? I know an investor. I know an investor. I know an investor. <laughs> cut the check. No, no. Yes. Wheezy, please. Cut the check. Public service announcement. I know, I know a guy. Time's free. Was well, the guy who cuts the checks. <laughs> I'm just into the crib. <laughs> Listen, I'm going to like rearrange narratives. Like I I'm learning too. You got to take credit for all your success, right? So I came up with the idea in Nobu for LA. Five minutes, sent the check out the next week. Went and scouted the place, wrote a check. I haven't even got a chance to record in the studio that I'm invested in yet. So. It's but nice, you guys haven't had some amazing. <laughs> yeah. Shout out to Herb Gotti. Yeah, I want the supreme it. story to be bigger than <laughs> Herb is a yeah. master at telling story. <laughs> he is. He is. He, he's in that realm of of great storytellers. Yeah, yeah he's him definitely. and Fat Joe. Are like, which is important when telling a, a an arc for a product or you know like the hero's journey. Which does the plot to the stock market? So I know people would be like, "Yo, y'all be talking about stuff that doesn't." Re all of it relates. Steve yeah, Jobs is probably the best. It's not just a phone, or internet browser, or email. It's all three in one. <laughs> <laughs> Ethernet. So, yeah. For, for um, real. All right. So, uh, big week. Yeah. You I might said. you might have heard. Yes. You might have heard, or you might not have heard, but um. Yes, we landed the big fish tomorrow at eight o'clock Eastern Standard Time on our YouTube channel or podcast outlets. We will be interviewing the richest black person in American history. Wow. Robert F. Smith, private equity titan uh, net worth currently estimated at eight point six billion dollars. Mm, Jeez. Um, well, I have to yeah, ask. Have a smile in the job. presence of, of a real genius <laughs> like the, the, you know some people we just give them the the title genius like it's different when you're in the presence of one you hear the story how it went from engineering to logistics to simplifying and making things so efficient like i think his goal in life was really just to make life efficiency and make business efficient mm -hmm. and he's done it at the the highest highest level it, it was an honor it was an honor I have to ask, what are two or three biggest lessons that you learned from the brother, especially the one about scale with the one y'all was on canal look like he was giving y'all some info. Now, don't put out anything that you can't tell. No. <laughs> yeah, they got to watch for yeah, some yeah. of that. Well, that you, even if you watch, you can't get that can't information. Get that. But <laughs> yeah. um, pretty much what he was saying with the scale is, um, you know, seeing how 
seeing how we can really, you know, um, impact on the educational side, like in a systematic way, right? Where it's like kids, kids are learning on, on like downloading information, loading it, and then they're teaching their parents or parents learning at the same time where it's like now, you know, people, you know, they, they're tuning in, they watch and things of that nature, but it's like, how do you, how do you make it more, um, organized, I guess is yep. the best way. Yep. How do you make it more organized and, um, just have more systems in place where it could actually, you know, become like real, real mainstream mainstream education as opposed to you know what it is now which is you know if 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 you're into it it's a subculture of financial literacy but how do you make it mainstream right so that's kind of that's kind of game yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah i mean that is how to do the floyd how to, yeah, how to yeah, yeah floyd, i know right floyd. <laughs> floyd, how like floyd floyd billions <laughs> so when i fought hey, <laughs> man freddie keyword mergers and acquisitions i'll tell you another thing Ian, and, and this is um it caught me off guard because we, we had met him before just briefly uh, when we were with Steve Harvey. Um, but when he got out of his van, so this is like 6.45 in the morning, we're on Canal Street, and he walked out. And Shadi didn't even get out the car yet. And he walked over to me. I'm like, Mr. Smith, pleasure to meet you. He said, you're the teacher, right? Yeah, in the Bronx. Wow. You, you, you were teaching phys ed and health. And in my mind, I'm like, wait. But it talks to the power of knowing who you're about to be in front of. Like even at his level, he's studying who we are to see what we're doing, how he, we can make yeah. our systems more efficient, which speaks a lot to him because I mean, he has a million things going on, but he took yeah. time to figure out who we were and how he can help, which we always talk to people all the time. Like most people say, let me do this. How, 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 can I, how can I be down? How can I be down? His thing was like, here's how I can help you in your journey right now be more efficient. Well, um, so that, that speaks a lot to him, his character. And I think, um. I just want to talk about a few things because it's important. So a, it was the earliest interview that we've ever done. Um, we interviewed him at seven o'clock in the morning on Friday. So that's by far the <laughs> earliest interview that we've ever done. Um, but like they say, the early bird catches the worm and they always say like that billionaire time is different. So mm -hmm. not only was it at seven o'clock on Friday, which that's a lesson within itself, but he was there at, as Troy says, 645. Mm -hmm. His team, the first person from his team came at 620. And then everybody else came and then he pulled up at 645. So not only is it the earliest interview that we've ever done, he's early to the earliest interview yep. that we've ever done in a three-piece suit <laughs> um, at 645 AM before anybody was outside. We was outside having a conversation. That's why, I like that video I put on Instagram of us talking outside. People were like, yeah, where's the people at? I'm like, nobody was outside. Sleep. It's six. Yeah. It's six fifty. Like six fifty a.m. We we in Manhattan, and nobody's outside because everybody's still sleeping. And that day he had a flight. He had a couple of different things to do that day. That's why we had to do it so early. So I think that that's important for people to understand the work ethic. Like a lot of times, people just see the, the glitz and glamour. He's worth eight billion dollars. Like you don't get to that level by accident. Mm -hmm. To have that level of commitment to be up that early, ready to work For years. Yeah, yeah. It takes it takes a different level of discipline. It takes a different level of commitment, and it takes a different level of sacrifice. That's what people don't really understand either. It's like okay, he's up, he's leaving, he's flying. He's leaving something. He's not there for something. Like somebody, some it's it's a it's a you know what I'm saying something is missing. So it's like a four a.m. five a.m. Yep. Yeah, it's a sacrifice. So he has a family. He has like you know what I'm saying. So it's like he's he's not with his family because he's with us. He's not with his family because he's traveling. That's the sacrifice. That's the commitment that you know people don't see. So kudos to to Mr. Smith, man. It was a it was definitely a dope and then. It was really, really crazy because I wrote an article on Instagram years ago about him. And then when I was telling him about it, he said that he actually remembered the article and he read the article. So mm -hmm. I say that to say, you never know who's watching. Because at that time, we wasn't even, it was before Earn Your Leisure. That's before Earn Your Leisure even existed. So who would have really thought that the person that I'm actually writing about is actually tapped in when I only got a couple thousand followers on Instagram. So it just goes to show you that you got to be careful with your words because you never know. Um, but then you also have to put out there what you want because you never know. Exactly. You never know. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, speaking into like, existence. You yeah. never know. So it's, 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 that's extremely important, but definitely check that episode out, man. So many gems we can talk about later on if you're interested. But another thing is like, I didn't know his background until I started researching him. I didn't know that he was an engineer and then he was a computer, um, programmer. 
and then he worked for Goldman Sachs mm-hmm. on, in the mergers and acquisitions department, and then he went to private equity. So I, I knew the private equity side, but I didn't actually know that he's actually a trained engineer before all of this. And he was saying that his engineering background, he was like, you might not think that it really plays into private equity, but it does. Sure. How he sees numbers, mm-hmm. how, how he, you know, he, how he moves off efficiency. That's all, that's all due to his engineering background. That's how he looks at, like, you know, on, as an engineer. So very interesting, extremely, yeah. extremely intelligent. Like he's very, he's one of these like very, very smart, obviously, but he's like extremely like, yeah. you know, intelligent per- people. So it's a very high level conversation. Some yeah. things you just can't dumb down. <laughs> yeah, nah, it's crazy. Yeah, yeah, down, uh, and just to the audience with love and respect and blessings and peace and namaste, you have to level up to get to where you want to be. It is not mm-hmm. anyone's job who is financially free or a billionaire to dumb anything down. Reach up. Even on the punctuality thing, when a person is late to a meeting, normally I, I can tell from that alone that they make less than $300,000 a year. Everyone that I know that is a millionaire, up deck a millionaire, they are never late. Some people, I even told some people at um, Madison Square, hey, bring your pitch deck if you want to pitch me anything. Gave a time, some people was 45 minutes late. I'm like, you'll never get to the million because will I be able to build a business with you or connect you to someone who can help you build a business if you can't show up for the first thing to get the check? When you get the check, you're really not going to show up. So I'm looking forward to the interview. Um, and yeah, those lessons that are given from those caliber of people who just think at a higher level, read more, taking in more information. If he's there at 645, he probably had a 4 a.m. meeting, 5 a.m. meeting prior to. Mm-hmm. Um, it is the audience's job, everyone listening to level up the level of intellect, especially while we are in a recession, even though they won't announce it yet. Yeah. So check that out tomorrow. Big one. Yes. Uh, disclaimer. Yeah, man. Uh, our content is intended to be used and must be used for informational purposes only. It's very important to do your own al- analysis before making any investment based on your own personal circumstances. You should take independent financial advice from a professional to connection with or independently research and verify any information that you find on our show and wish to rely upon, whether for the purpose of making an investment decision or otherwise, this is a message brought to you by the good brothers at Earn Your Leisure and the good brother Ian Dunlap, the master investor himself. Please, folks, continue to do your own research and when it's great, share it. But if it's mine, do that. don't steal it. And, and if it's his, well, don't try to read it. So he's so happy that. in 2023. <laughs> so. Wow, I don't want to tell you about a great choice if you're looking to bank and invest. Ally is a leading digital financial service company with passionate customer service, innovative financial solutions, and our relentlessly focus on doing it right. For both customers and our communities, get with allies so you can save, invest, and spend on the things that matter most to you. For everything we need, we are all better off with an ally. Yes, we are. A couple months ago, Ally, we had a conversation on, me and Rashad had a spirited debate on if Mm. we should run ads or only do product. Let Rashad be right. Because if not, in 2023, (laughs) we're going to go product crazy. And I love you guys dearly. But I don't real estate. I don't a lot think of real estate. we should not be having a five-year deal. Hello, TD Ameritrade. Hello, Vanguard. Hello, Citadel. Hello, Trade Moss. Hello, Red Panda. Hello to our group text chat. If you would like to be yeah, yes. our group text chat, Rashad and Troy group, can drop the link in bio. The group text chat is lit right now. Ian put a dope trade. I won't say what the trade is, but he put a dope trade in there last week. Troy's been putting articles. I'm uh, about to do a Zoom. I think we're going to do a Zoom call. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm going to add some insight. While that. overseas or? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't tell. You never know. People going Bonjour. places. Bonjour. We're on the road again. Bonjour. <laughs> hey. Bonjour. I was like, damn, uh, so I, yeah. I was going to stay home for Christmas. <laughs> Duty calls. Ian, the bat signal went out. Ian, IanInvest.com. That's the group chat. Myself, Troy, and Ian. Uh, daily information, um, information on trades. Uh, we're going to be doing Zooms. We're going to be having, you know, articles. More on information. where to get in, where to get out, when to stop shorting, when the market is falling apart. If I made you money, please put yes in chat. 2023, I'm raising prices. I don't want to hear nothing about yeah. it for the culture. <laughs> yeah. And, and th- I don't know who's to, more accurate. There's, there's a method to the information. And if you look at it, 
there's certain areas and certain, you know, industries that I'm looking at that I think that we should all be looking at. And so if you've seen the pattern of the articles, mm -hmm. you'll start catching there's the drift reason. of what's happening. <laughs> yes. Well played. Well played. Thank you, sir. <laughs> and if you are, if you're not on the, on the, on the Telegram group chat yet, if you're, if you're in the group chat, you got to log in so you can get the information. So make sure you do that. Yes. Um, you, all right. Awesome. Ian. Join Red Panda Stock Club. Oh, I'm going to cut you off, brother. No, I was going to say the floor is yours. Thank you. Um, if you want to know what to invest in in this crazy market and be profitable, you can join the Red Panda Stock Club. If Troy Rashad wants you, they can drop a link there. Um, I'm having a training with Peter Tuckman tomorrow at 7 p.m. Central, I believe. Uh, if you join the joinredpanda.com email list and you're in Stock Club, that link will be sent out. Um, I uh, Check out December 14th. My interview with Mark Lamont Hill and the Grio. Um, ah. Fascinating talk. So make them all around, shaking hands and kissing babies, you know. Um, but, yeah. but kudos to the team. And uh, shout out to the Grio. Yeah. yeah, shout out to Shout the out to you, man. Shout out to you in, in that street piece with your uh, Ross Mack, man. Shout out to you. Thank you, man. Well, shout out to Ross. Yeah, I mean, I was honored to be there. I thought it would only, going back to big lesson in 2023, write this down. You have to tell the world what your creations are or other people will act like they made your creations. So when I was talking to JD at the street, I'm like, oh, you cool with Ross? He's like, yeah, I'm like, you should bring him in and Peter. And now the interview did well and we had some talks to maybe do a couple more things together. So um, for my creators, I'm learning in these meetings and boardroom meetings that sometimes people will act as if their idea was yours and then they want to get EP credit. We're not having it. Troy is not having it. Rashad is not having it in 2023. AB is not having it. They won't say anything. I will. I'll be the bad guy. This is Ian Dunlap <laughs> and the Red Panda Rebellion is not a reflection of Earn Your Leisure, Troy, or Rashad. Y'all like my rants and all. <laughs> Let's get to Appreciate it. That. And even in the rants, rants. There, there are gems there. And tune in rants to Rants and gems. gems this week. Rants and Man. Gems. Yeah. Keon. The Rants and Gems podcast. Yes. That's a fact. All right. So let's get into this. Yes, we will be airing the Floyd Mayweather conversation from MSG. Um, but first, we um, just have a couple of uh, hot topics that we're going to go over, and then we'll get into Floyd, and then we'll come back and provide some more information before we end out the show. So first thing is, is Twitter the perfect blueprint for what most tech companies should do to make companies profitable in this new era? Yes. Short answer is yes. Um I think because of quantitative easing and the money flowing easily and everyone on Instagram telling everyone to be entrepreneurs, that they confused the audience into thinking that it was easy to grow, scale, and be profitable. Um, now, going into this recession, which I called November of last year, you have to find a way, and I've been telling my team this, even when I went to the street, normally, you know, CNBC, their shows ha have a bigger set. Kramer himself is down to him, a producer, and three screens. As big as Matt Money is. I'm watching the halftime report. Shout out to God, I mean, everyone I met there. Everyone's producing, like, when I was talking to Loon, I'm like, you have to be able to create your own segments, be your own field producer. We see you guys, you got to be able to shoot, audio engineer, edit, color grade, and do social. The world is changing. The era that from 2023 to 2030 is if you are not able to do the job of five people, you will not be hired. This goes for every business genre. And behind the scenes with what Elon has done, even though it's been sloppy, a lot of venture capital firms are now expecting companies to do the same thing that he is doing, which is to have a lighter staff, produce higher returns, and it also gives you a longer runway for capital. So you have more capital in your business and you don't have as short of a runway. So companies that were thinking about maybe going out of business in 12 months, <clears throat> by scaling down their workforce, they now have 24, 36 months of cash available. You're going to see every major tech company. And as much as I hate to say it, because I've had a chance to meet some great, pe great people at Meta, Meta probably needs to cut 50% of their workforce in order to be viable. We're going to see this at scale. As a person, if you have a job or if you're an entrepreneur, one of the, I, I can't say it, but I'll give you guys a, a rounded number. I asked someone on the floor, I'm like, hey, I saw a trader get preferential treatment. 
she's now going to become partner. I said, Hey, what did she do to become partner? He said, she replaced the work of 10 people in one mm -hmm. year with people who were here with me four or five years prior. In one year, she replaced 10. And these were not low level. And these were big dogs. And she came in and replaced minimum of 10. Uh, that's why I always go back to risk to reward. If I'm putting a dollar in, can I get 10 out? Can I get 11 out? Can I get 50? If I can get 50, I'll do that all day. Um, so yes, this era, we're going to have to go back to being ultra efficient because the capital is not there in, in a recession. You have to make drastic cuts in order to be more successful. Yeah, I'm with you on that. I, I'm, and now that I think of it, I'm, um, you, you, you're, you're dead on, especially in this space. And you've seen it a lot of times when we're on the road, you're like, wait, you, know, you guys, you're doing everything. And it's like, yeah, we do everything because we want to know every piece of our business, but it makes it more efficient, right? We're not even thinking of the standpoint of like, yeah, we're more profitable because we don't have to pay people to do it. At some point, we, we obviously do, but it's like, we want to know how to make this work even if no one's here. And so if you're talking about from that, from a tech standpoint, it makes perfect sense to cut back and figure out who's the most skilled, mm -hmm. right? Not even how many skills do you have, but who's the most skilled? Because the most skilled person is probably going to be the most efficient one that's going to get the job done at an ex expedited time. I'm thinking about it from the standpoint and when we're looking at tech companies, because you said it was sloppy. Yeah. And if you look at the reports of the inverse of what's happened, obviously with the Twitter, but what has it done to the other company that he, he also you know owns, right? So that inverse of how it's affected the Tesla stock it's been a negative impact just yeah. because of how, you know, the investment has gone to, to, to Twitter and people are trying to figure out how is this going to be profitable? Will it affect the other company? Uh, like that's the piece that's interesting to me as well. What's I mean, your thoughts the, on that? the truth is great company, but Tesla is highly overvalued. And I would argue if John Mulally was there or any other American car executive, the price of Tesla now would have been there last year. The only reason that the value of Tesla is so high is because he's sitting in that seat. Yeah. But I think everyone is thinking too short-sighted. We're in a recession, even though they won't announce it. Breaking news, we're in a recession. And if he's able to get this SpaceX off and the Neuralink thing, whew, icon living, Jaden Smith, right? Yeah, true, true, different, yeah. different level of wealth easy to trillion dollars, right? So I think, um, and I've said it before and I'll say it again, please listen up, please write this down. The stock market is at the actual price where it should be once they took the steroids out of the market. I don't want to tell you anything though. Apple, Microsoft, as much as we fight it. And then, you know, I make the statement about going into cybersecurity and people are like, oh, they wouldn't do it. Why wouldn't they? Now Apple has announced they're going to finally put out that car and, and I put it in a group text the reason why they're launching that car in that particular year. Please be mindful. There's only maybe 10 or 15 great companies. You don't need more information. You need to double down and put more capital into the companies that run the world so you can be rich. The question is, do you want to be rich or do you want to debate and not be accountable? Because the truth is, whenever Troy Rashad get to Dubai, wherever the hell they're going, right? And I... <laughs> Uh, get next to King Griffin at Citadel. In four years, when you run into us, my first question is, to you is going to be, did you put in enough work for you to make 10 to $15 million in a year? You have the same information that we have. And the crazy part is, I'm giving away all my real information in real time. Are you building every day? They just told you Robert is already rich, but he is still up and punctual every day. Put in chat, yes. And for the last 365 days, you haven't missed a day of work, no matter what happened in your life. The recession proves who really, and it, we hear all these stories in 1929 and 99 and 2001 about people who seize opportunities. I don't see enough people seizing. I see too many people talking. And I want to steer you guys back, right? So I think Elon, although it was sloppy, things are going to change. And if... That happens in Silicon Valley. What do you think is going to happen in the middle of America? I told you guys a story. Apple team has a $2 trillion cash fund that is managed by seven people. It is a minimum requirement for everybody in Red Panda Rebellion to bring in $10 million themselves. So you would not be on the team. The hell I need 50 people for if they have seven. But, and if you want to be an asset to a team, 
You got an episode of SLS and liabilities this week? No, you got the final season. Revolt, time to renew. <laughs> I appreciate you, brother. Um, but if you want to be an asset to a team, find out how you can come in and 10x the business or 5x the business. It's an easy way to get a job. I think the era of easy jobs, easy partnerships, easy stocks, easy NFTs, which will crumble, and I said they will fall, and no one believed me, is gone. Now we're in the era of the super producer. And it's going to get to a point where you're going to have to 5X or 10X some shit just to get in the door. Otherwise, you can do it on your own and keep the capital costs down. What are your thoughts? Capital costs down. Have to. Yeah. Thank you. Hit the, the, the a nail on the head. Anything you want to add to that, Troy? No, I think you ended it perfectly. Keep the capital costs down. Find the most efficient people. That's going to be the theme of, of this week, right? Look, Absolutely. do an analysis of the people that you're around, especially in business and in, entrep in the entrepreneurial world. Who is adding value at the most efficient level? Everybody don't make the cut. It hurt too. Boy. Whew. Everybody don't get the make 2023. Subtract the weak links from out the chain. And rise and start raining. Okay. Let's be more efficient. Efficiency. Word of the day. Efficiency. <laughs> um, okay. Are we shocked at the information that was released uh, in the leaked Twitter file, what, and what is what is what is the old this this whole situation about? Um, so some information came out from from some people who worked at Twitter. Uh, two revelations that people are being shadow banned. Majority of people who are are on the right wing or right leaning is one, and of course they knew about the Russian hack before the election, and they knew about Hunter Biden's laptop and had all the information prior to. And I, I've seen a lot of people report on this and do shows and do breakdowns over the weekend. And I'm like, are is anyone shocked that social media shadow bans people? I've seen it happen to I don't even want to say his name. I love you, brother. I don't even want to say I his got, name. I, I got shadow banned twice. Um this is early in the early stages of Ernie Alicia, my own personal page. I got shadow banned. Um I was using, you know, at that time use hashtags. So gotcha. it was like a hack where you put like 30 hashtags on each post and that, that helps your engagement. What I didn't know is that if you do that too many times, it could become a red flag and it could be, you know, flagged as spam. Yep. And um, I got shadow banned. How I knew I got shadow banned was, uh, so obviously my engagement dropped, everything was lower, but you know, I did like a random hashtag that nobody would have, let's say like, Ian, Rashad, Troy, 197, you know, something that nobody else would have, right? I put that on a post and then I go to that hashtag and then it's not, it's, it doesn't show up. Mm. So that's how I knew, okay, like this is like, I'm not, my posts are not being shown. Cause when you, when you type in a hashtag, like on Instagram, if you type in, you know, red chili pepper, you, when you hit red chili pepper, a thousand red chili pepper posts come up, whatever's in there comes up. So if, if you have a unique hashtag that nobody else has, then when you type in that, then you're supposed to come up. You're going to be the only one that comes up because you're the only one that has the hashtag. So mm -hmm. when you don't come up, then it's a red flag. And then it was a couple other things that I had noticed, but it's definitely real. It's not, it's not a conspiracy theory at all. I experienced it firsthand. Like I said, I actually experienced it twice and my page never really fully recovered from that either. At the time, I actually had more followers on my own personal page than Ernie Alicia had. So the, the effects are long lasting um, and it's extremely harmful and um, it's real. So I know it's a lot of times people think like it's a conspiracy and, you it's know, it's, but it's, no, it's actually real. And like I said, I could speak from firsthand experience. Shadow ban is definitely a real thing. And it lasts 14 days. And the crazy thing is I had did a whole research on this. And at that time, at least it lasts 14 days. And 14 days to the day, um, I did the same test again, and then my hashtag started working again. That's crazy. And it was like the shadow ban was up. So now it's definitely a real thing for sure. And now the part that is troubling is if these tech platforms that are left-leaning, because Twitter probably has the highest congregation of left-leaning employees, um, are they using that influence to rig an election or influence an election? Yes. I didn't think that was like the most controversial thing ever. Um, even with the Sam Bankman-Fried thing, all the money that he gave was a very strategic move on his part to receive some sympathy, um, knowing the behind the scenes of the business, 
makes total sense now. And then he went on left leaning media and they gave him softball questions. Like I love Andrew Ross Sorkin dearly. Uh, executive producer, one of my favorite shows ever, Billions. Boy, did they lob him some softball ass questions that I did not think. And I know the thought is, it's not our job to investigate or uncover scams. But when you have a person and he's being paraded around, and I think part of it is they're trying to make the case in a court of public opinion that he was unaware and that it was his team that did the customer transfer. So he is not guilty of fraud. I don't wish jail on anybody, but if had that been UI, there's no way on earth I would be given that kind of grace publicly amongst any media. I mean, I've publicly seen it. People copy this show format on large networks. And then I talk to somebody at the large network and I'm like, it's good for you to come on. I'm like, the format was good enough to come on. What do you mean? So I, I just think it's interesting. Um, the purpose of media is to control public opinion. I just don't know why people were shocked that people are getting shadow banned and, and certain information is being released and leaked. And so it's, it's the American way of business always has been, always will be. It's just different players in the space now. But I don't think it's the most important news topic for us to cover, but it was so much conversation around it. Um, mm -hmm. We definitely had to address it. Yeah, I, I think if the question is, are we shocked? No. Um, I think that the the part of it is he's trying to figure out who it is, right? Because I think ever since he's taken over, obviously we saw how he came in and how he let people go, and that was a whole controversy. But now there's still people inside of the the company that are allegedly leaking these files, yeah. and so he's made everybody sign the NDA, and so now it's going to become like a lawsuit. Once they figure out who's leaking it, now it becomes a bigger lawsuit because now you violated the NDA of the company. But I mean, if you don't get it soon enough, I mean. You're, you're letting people go at a rate that people are going to be disgruntled. And so, like, you could have a disgruntled group of employees right now inside of it to say, all right, well, we're making our plans leave anyway. Let's go out like this. So, surprise, no. Will more leaks come? Probably. Um, yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll monitor the situation. Shout out to Elon and Lori Harvey for uh, enacting the NDAs. That's something I will be doing going <laughs> forward, too. You heard so, about that? Uh, so, uh, <laughs> you just... <laughs> Friend of the Genius, show, friend, business woman friend, of the year. <laughs> Shout to the queen. friend of the show. Allegedly, this is all alleged. So, Lori Harvey, uh, in order to data, you have to sign an NDA that if you go if you uh, go outside the the legality of the NDA, it's a million dollar lawsuit. Pay that fine, baby. <laughs> yeah, twenty twenty three. Yeah, y'all y'all gonna sign it in this ally purple. Shout out to the lawyer. That's Love. H. What's good, bro? Love. That's smart. Love. Though. Because you have a brand to protect, Elon, same way. And then when you have people leaking company documents, it has me thinking, like, who was paid to enact those kind of rules and principles at Twitter. And and once for the people who are leaking it, I don't want to cast any aspersions against them, as Stephen A. would say. But there are people who either focus on, like, little tasks or extreme growth. I think if a person is like 2X or 5X in a business or making a business like 300% more efficient, you don't have time for BS like that. I think a lot of times in recessions when people have not been doing a great job, they will turn around and not be accountable and try and get revenge. Very rarely does somebody like bring in $50 million to the business and they want to get revenge because they'll find a way to get, get, get a piece of that money. But um for everyone that is working, and I've told you this before, I know in the military is different. I know in certain companies is different. You have to find a way to get to the top of command, whether the CEO, president, founder, and say, hey, what's the number one thing that you need without upsetting the middle manager? Because at the end of the day, if you get fired, your middle manager won't send you any money. This is dog eat dog, walking dead, last of us, uh, above the rim, hardcore boonks, one on one bully ball can for everyone please write this down if you can't bring in 10 to 15 million dollars for a company you are not safe and let's be honest we're gonna be real honest here today that's an entry level number there's some bozos and raptors walking around with 10 to 15 who got lucky two summers in a row so for a major company the number one focus for everyone has to be are you a super producer or revenue provider and the companies that you should invest in have a ton of those.
And if I've made you money, please put yes in chat. I'm a super producer. So a shout out to the bozos out there. I love you. So let me, let me ask you this. Microsoft buys a 4% stake in the London stock exchange. How will this help the company and stock going forward? I miss London. We need to go back. We need to go back. <laughs> Shout out to London, man. Shout yeah, out yeah, to yeah. Tape London. Shout out to everybody out there, man. London vibes. Yeah. We need to yeah, let me give like a breakdown of, of yeah. what the, the merger means. And then you give you, all right, so for those who, who weren't up on the news. So the partnership involves next generation data and analytics, as well as cloud computing products, according to the statement by the LSEG, which is the London Stock Exchange Group. It includes a new data infrastructure for the London Exchange and analytics modeling solutions with Microsoft Azure, uh, AI, and Microsoft Teams. So pretty much think about Microsoft incorporating their technology into a stock exchange to make it more word of the day efficient. Um, Ian God. Um, I've said it before and I'll say it again. I think every company on earth at some point is going to have to get into the hedge fund business, which is the business of who can provide the highest returns. You don't think, let, let's say like I'm watching Robin Hood, right? We all are. You don't think Microsoft watch the craze of Robin Hood and the GameStop craziness and FTX and didn't say, if we come in and provide a safe platform with cybersecurity and our global reach, we can probably take over this market. Let me ask you right now, who would you rather invest in? Microsoft's platform or TD Ameritrade? I love TD Ameritrade, but if Microsoft had a thinkorswim, I would be there. FT, and you don't think they're looking at this crypto space and then calling all their lobbying friends and say, hey, why don't you put a call in and see if we can legitimize and le leverage this crypto space, but with our trust and international backing, plus with lobbying, plus with government and safety. Now that's another market they could tap into easily. I think this is just the beginning of a bunch of investments that they will make in the financial space to ultimately build a robust financial product because the number one market in the world is the money market. I'm surprised they haven't moved there prior to. So if Apple's hiring crypto developers and all this stuff on the back end, working on that project, um, and Tim Cook is being slightly petty to upset Elon because they could have launched this initiative as well. Microsoft is very quiet. One of the, write this down. One of the fundamentals that I look for in a CEO of any company is an aggregate, how many times will they speak publicly versus their competitive CEO? I like a very quiet, calm, humble CEO. If they are from an Indian background, even better. Because culturally things are done better there. But I think we're going to see a hard push, just what Apple did with health healthcare and Amazon did with healthcare. And they've tested some things with this credit card and a couple other products. In four or five years, you're going to see Apple, excuse me, Microsoft make a heavy push into the financial space. And with all this crypto contagion blowing up and tether leaning on and hanging on by thread, it's going to be a great push. And I think this is just a test at scale. Like, I'm going to be honest, them testing this with the London Stock Exchange was my episode 70. I was need a proof of concept. Cool. Now, the platform is going to be Market Mondays for them. And when they come out with the platform in a couple of years, it is going to be game, set, match. What are your thoughts? Is there any competitor that can take down Microsoft in a financial space? Shaw Ponder, he's like, that boy good. Got some sleep. Um, <laughs> <laughs> of course, Microsoft is a giant. Sure. Um, so it is it's gonna be interesting to see. Uh you know, you always have to give advantages to companies that do things full time. Like I like Apple as far as going into the to the car space, but I wouldn't count out Tesla because Tesla's been doing this right, okay. and it's, it's 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 a side it's a it's a side meal for 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 Apple. It's not their main it's not their main course. So I'm always gonna I'm always gonna be partial to companies that actually do it full time. So Microsoft isn't a full time financial company. They're definitely gonna be formidable in the space. Um. But you know, you you still have to look at 
of course, the JP Morgans of the world, the Fidelities of the world, the, you know, these are, these are companies that are not as big as Microsoft, but this is what they do full time. Mm-hmm. This is their full time attention and their full time focus. Yep. Um, and then it'll be, it'll be interesting to see what other tech companies want to get into the financial space. Apple, yeah. um, you know, they get into everything. So I some kind. imagine, I imagine that they would, they would have at some point, they, they will have a strong push into the financial services industry. I don't see why they wouldn't. Um, it goes hand in hand with a lot of other stuff that they do anyway. It'll be interesting to see Google. I think Google is a company that, you know, I could definitely see making a strong push into the financial services industry. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think the financial services industry is, is, is going to be, you know, ch- changed over the next 20 years. Yeah. Question. Yeah. Comment? Question. Your yeah, question for okay. the sake of uh, not, not interrupting. Rem- I want to uh, recall a conversation we had maybe a year and a half ago. You called me and like, yo, I'm tired of insert person. I'm going to go make this move at insert partnership, right? <laughs> insert, 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 insert. And I was like, wow, <laughs> really? He like, yeah, you know, I'm tired of helping people and them taking it for granted and not appreciating. Let me just blow it out of the water. You don't <laughs> think that Microsoft and they're blown out of the water. I'm, I won't. Yeah, I'm in a good space, so I'm not going to say that. But you don't think at some point Microsoft or Apple will have the same feeling because a lot of it, and it's a good lesson for people to learn, you cannot force a wartime strategy with a team that you cannot beat. So if Microsoft gets upset enough, like you said, even the the car project is a side project. If you are a fan of Apple, you know EV was not even on a top 15 considerations three years ago until Elon had his commentary. And then blocking Meta was not an issue for apps, the App Store until Zuckerberg said what he said about Tim Cook. Um, so sometimes strategically, ego gets in the way. If you've ever seen Succession of Billions, and we're all human, sometimes we want revenge. Um, and they may not be able to beat the JP Morgan, but I think they can't take down a Robin Hood. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, I, so the thing about it is because I used to work in the financial services industry. So one thing that I know for sure is that the technology is not where it needs to be. Mm, and yes. It's, mm-hmm. it's, it's, it's behind as far as there's still way too much physical paperwork. There's still way too much, you know, there's, there's a lot more room. Like, don't get me wrong. Technology is obviously, you know, plays a big part in financial services, obviously, right? From, you know, trading um, computers and different things of nature. But there's still a lot more room, especially when you start thinking about artificial intelligence and, you know, all of this, this new technology that's coming that's not even out yet. Mm-hmm. Um I feel like financial services industry still has a long way to go as far as you know catching up to the to the tech industry. So the the it's a it's a perfect marriage between financial services and tech. Perfect, especially on the blockchain. And that's what that's what really, really, you know, the blockchain I think is really gonna be interesting to see how that plays in financial services because it's like um so to give you an example, life insurance, right? Um if you're if you're trying to buy life insurance what happens is that you go through an underwriting process and a lot of times if you have like a medical issue or if you just went to the doctor or something like that then they have to send out for your doctor records Mm -hmm. now the doctors that's this is still a manual process and it could take as quick as a couple days it could take as long as a couple of months it really just depends on how efficient the doctor's office is because the doctor's office has to actually get the records like physical records yeah then they have to actually email the records sometimes they even still even fax which is crazy they still actually fax records like doctor's offices they actually need technology more than anybody so it's like imagine if all of your medical records are on the blockchain once the insurance company asks for it is sent within a matter of seconds and an underwriter and not a, and not a human underwriter because human humans have objections, no matter how you still have some level of bias, you have some level of objection. Imagine if it was artificial and technology, artificial intelligence, that was an underwriter and just, they just get the data. All they see is numbers and they can give an approval right now. Yes or no. So imagine that you can get approved for life insurance on the spot within five minutes. Like I've seen policies take eight months to get approved because you got to go back and forth. You got to get the doctor. You got to talk to the underwriter. You got to explain to the underwriter why 
yeah, he has diabetes, but it's coming down. It's like, you know, it's still a personable, it's still a personable business. Imagine if all of that was taken away. Imagine how much money that would save. Imagine how more efficient that would be. Of course, there's going to be issues because there's no more human element to it. But I could definitely see that. I'm just using that as one example. There's a million different examples. But imagine if you could just apply for life insurance and then within 10 minutes, you know exactly if you got the policy, how much it's going to cost, what you got rated at. That's yeah. that's a game changer for the whole entire industry. Sounds like a way more efficient way to do business. Right. That's, 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 the like, like, that's the common theme. And yeah. I, I want to give the analogy, but I want them to see the episode of how he explains how business works in that efficient manner. But when you're talking about, especially with, with the, the London Stock Exchange, do you want to become one of the most global recognized marketplaces? Yeah. What do you do? You make a partnership with the best managed, and this is Wall Street Journal, the best managed company of 2022 was Microsoft, right? Hold on. Right. Say it again. The the number one, the best managed company in 2022 is Microsoft, right? So you, you get with them. Now you obviously are going to create infrastructure that is going to be premier. But what also you've done is now you've created a contract for a company, right? So when we're talking about the the, the cloud and AI segment, they've made a commitment to spend three, $3 billion to build infrastructure. three Just on that alone, right? So now... When you think about the LSH, you've seen even in today, their stock is going up just on the thought of this collaboration happening, but it's going to be more efficient for everybody, right? It helps them. It helps them on a global scale. It makes them legitimize, you know, their efforts even more so when they get with a company like this. So, I mean, I'm excited for them. Microsoft stock. Yeah. Bullish. Bullish. Always bullish. Um, Always. Hey, did you know who they bought the, the 4% from? The 4% stake? Who? Oh. You might have heard of the company. BlackRock. Well played. <laughs> well, at some point, we got to have a conversation about the guy that just is buying the stock exchanges that was dead broke five years ago. Mm. <laughs> Serious conversation. That was a real conversation. <laughs> that's, that's, that, that, that was a... That's another conversation. Who owns the New York Stock Exchange? <laughs> who owns... <laughs> do your Google searches on that. Yeah, right now. Do your please. Google searches on who owns the New York Stock Exchange. Yep. Do your Google searches of... Where where he appeared from, <laughs> magically, yeah, shout, out of nowhere. Shout out to Peter. Shout out to Peter on that man. <laughs> he, he enlightened us. He he, he gave. I us mean, education. And, he, even with Sam, there's a few people in the crypto space who popped up out of nowhere. When you look at the Crypto.com CEO. He's had a history of bad exits and bankruptcy. But there's a few people who have popped up out of nowhere and bought some brokerages with no money to their name. Houseway. For those of you who don't know, it costs hundreds of millions minimum to acquire a mid-sized brokerage, let alone some of the biggest. But I want to stay on air. But think, go think about show. that language, though. <laughs> like, think about the language. I'm sure there's people sitting here right now that didn't even know that was a possibility mm -hmm. that you could buy an exchange, right? So, like, once we see the possibility, like, that's even a thing that opens the eyes to educate yourself now in that space. The great thing is. Just had an idea, like yo, I want to buy. I want to. I want to buy. I want to start buying stock exchanges. Mm -hmm. And if then, I can make them more efficient, the science, just market just purchase, them. The, purchase the New York Stock Exchange. Create infrastructure. Yep. Mergers and acquisitions. Well played. Well played. And well played. that's why I say you only get one life. And for branding purposes, people may only know you for three things throughout the course of your life. You have to pick those three very carefully. But this is why when you have conversations with like a Robert Smith or Dave Rubenstein, like you have to level up your thinking, your level of execution and level of automation. Because these opportunities, like, and I'll say this now, for those of you trying to get rich and get the bag and get a real bag, not just a bag so you can go smash whoever you want to in Atlanta that got their body butt, you know. ATL. I'm not ATL. judging, I'm just saying. <laughs> well, I'm not um, Atlanta like that. <laughs> um, I mean, it's not happening in Albuquerque. Well, a little bit. Hell, anyway, Kirky, um, now over these next three or four years, you're going to have some opportunities to have the conversations. Trust me, if we was in a bull market, I wouldn't be on the exchange as much. There would be no need for me there. If we were in a bull market, trust me, I would be kicked out of meta like Jazzy Jeff used to get thrown out by Uncle Phil. But in a down market, you have to 
quintuple your efforts to get these deals done because people are now open to them. But yeah, to even buy an exchange with a thought of, come on, man. One of these things, everybody, everybody wants to buy stock, but who owns the stock exchange? Yep. There's always levels to this. You buy in stock, somebody owns the stock exchange. Mm -hmm. Never really thought about that. Mm -hmm. Most people never really think about it. Mm -hmm. One of these things, one of these things. All right. So now we got a treat for you guys. Yes. Yes. Of course, we had the legendary sold out show at MSG market Mondays live. Shout out to everybody that was a part of that. Um, we interviewed Don Peebles there. We interviewed Peter Tuckman. Of course, all three of us were there. Uh, Mouse Jones, dope performance. DJ Sus one was on the one and twos. Uh, Jada Kiss, legendary performance mm -hmm. from him. Absolutely. Little C's. And uh, Little C's. He got the building rocking when he came out. Oh, C's yeah, got yeah, three. Yeah. three. C's got three. That's what my man was telling you. He was like, I guess him and Jada Kiss is real cool, so he brings them on, on tour sometimes. But C's got three songs that if he plays those songs, yeah. That, I mean, that B.I.G., that's big. That's part of the biggest catalog. So yeah, why wouldn't you? You play Crush On You. You play, you know, Get Money. Like, the Get Money remix? No. Nah, mm -hmm. Legendary. Yeah. Um, but, of course, we had the champ. Floyd Money Mayweather. Yeah, his money. My name the man money. that made the most money while he was an athlete. He was number one on Forbes every single year. Made more money than any soccer player, any football player, any basketball player with no endorsements, fighting one or two fights a year. At Which most. is crazy that he never had any major endorsements. Yep. Um, so Floyd, interesting person, one of the greatest athletes of all time, um, was able to become one of the greatest sports business people of all time, mm -hmm. changed the game, revolutionized the sport of boxing um, to become his own promoter in a sense to, um, you know, really cash out on pay-per-view like nobody else has ever done, to, you know, have the transparency 24-7, that's his idea, um, to create, you know, that that character of himself as far as the money, Mayweather, from pretty boy to, to, to money. And, um, yeah, you know, just is, is an icon living when it comes to what he does. So we had a chance to rap with him. Um, so, yeah, we're going we to let you guys in on, on that segment. And uh, here we go. Enjoy. Let's do it. Enjoy. Oh. The champ is here. And Make some noise. The champ came with the chandelier. Listen, he is one of the greatest investors and business people of all time. He does not have to be here, but he loves us and the culture. Say, I love you, Floyd. <laughs> thank you for being here. <laughs> Let's go. Well, nah, thank you. Thank, thank you for coming, brother. I appreciate this, man. How's the game? This is dope for us, Appreciate man. You. So I should have gave my little money away way faster. <laughs> yeah, it might be different. <laughs> like, man, give away that watch. It ain't gonna be as impressive now, Ian. <laughs> so I want I want to get right into it, Floyd. So I'm a fan of the sport, and I'm a fan of like boxing. I actually watch boxing. So let's talk about this. You change the game when you bet on yourself, right? Yes. I believe you brought yourself out of your contract with Bob Aaron for twenty million dollars. I think it was. Before or after the De La Hoya fight? Well, no, I bought myself on my contract at that particular time for seven hundred and fifty thousand. Okay. And then once I left them, um, what, with, the, with, the, with the Manny Pacquiao fight, the Canelo, and the McGregor, I made seven hundred fifty million from three wow. fights. <laughs> Clap it up for that. So what? What? Yeah. What made you want to? buy yourself out of the contract what made you have the vision to become your own boss because now you know it's, it's easy to see it but at the time it wasn't you know i think bob aaron didn't think it was going to work he had some comments about that right i i, I just had vision you know i didn't want to just sir, um, speak, speak. I'm, I'm sorry well i i had vision and i didn't just want to be promoted in one area i wanted the money to be spread it out so i can be promoted all around the world yeah you know i wanted to be worldwide so i think they kind of had me in a chokehold and i didn't want to be in a chokehold so i took it upon myself um to buy myself on my contract and gamble on myself and to become my own boss and that's what i did in the biggest way i love it floyd now your dad showed you around the ropes in the ring. Obviously, your, your, your late uncle showed you the ropes in, in, in boxing as well. 
But I'm interested in who showed you the ropes in business, right? We, we hear about Al Heyman. He's one of those guys we've never seen. How did that de relationship develop? How'd you foster it? Well, actually, how I met Al Heyman. You know, a lot, a lot of people in this room, you know, you guys need to do your homework. You know, so everyone should know Al Heyman. This guy is a shrewd businessman, unbelievable, um, just mentor. He's like a he's like a second father. So um, for years, I kept hearing his name, kept, he kept hearing his name. He wanted to get involved in boxing, and he's just like myself. He's a chess player. So his ultimate goal was to get the biggest, the fighter that he seen that he knew was going to be the biggest, mm -hmm. and then he knew that all the rest of the fighters would follow. Mm -hmm. And then w once that happened. You know, um, of course, we were we started off as he was my man. He was manager. He, he was my manager. Then eventually we became business partners. And now we have somewhere upwards of 400 fighters. Wow. That's incredible. <clears throat> um, <laughs> I was first introduced to your work ethic. Uh, in my hometown, there was a fighter named Angel Man Freddie that you kind of dog walked. Right. <laughs> so shout out Angel. Shout out to everybody from East Chicago and Gary. Uh, hey, let's make some noise. <laughs> but I've always wanted to ask you this question because I'll talk to everyone here about mastering their craft and being consistent. Yes. In your prime, give me the honest answer, brother. How many hours a day were you working on your craft to be the best in the world? I, I, I don't, I can't really say, you know, um, the hate, the jealousy mm. was a part of the motivation. It fueled you? Yeah, I mean, I, I needed it. You know, I, hit it, I needed the, the doubters. Yeah. That made me push and work extremely hard each and every day. Floyd can't do this, he can't do that. But my ultimate goal was just to pull my mother out of poverty. Yeah. You know, help, you know, help my grandmother, put her in the bed. Clap it up for that, that's what it's about. You know, a lot of, you know, I think the people always see just, you know, the flashiness. Yeah. But it took a lot of hard work, a lot of hard work from, um, dedication. <laughs> so you know, dedication. <laughs> you know, I had my first fight in 1987. Wow. You know, 1987. Um, every day, you know, I really have to take my hat off to my father, great businessman. I, yeah. I mean, just I love him to death. You know, because if, if it wasn't for my father, I wouldn't be where I'm at. My Same dad. For me. My dad told me, you know, the first thing he taught me, the less you get hit, the longer you're going you're gonna to be able to last. Defense first and invest in two. <laughs> yeah, Listen, actually, and um, every day my dad would go out and hustle. Of course, my dad, because his career didn't didn't turn out like he wanted his career to turn out. Yeah. So my dad would hustle every day. But one thing that my dad he took time out every day to take me to the boxing gym. Wow. And um, from 1987 all the way to 1993, my dad was working with me. Then eventually. Um, he caught a case, you know, a federal case. Yeah. He went to prison and I kept working, kept working hard, went to the Olympics. After the Olympics, I moved to uh, Vegas, um, started working with my uncle Roger. Yeah. And nothing happens overnight. We took our time. We worked, we worked, um, we pushed and we worked and we broke, we broke records. Uh, listen, they saw y'all, you running two years ago. Well, I'm gonna tell them a story. So the story. this is extremely important. I wanna talk about discipline and work ethic because that's true in anything you do, right? No matter what, you have to be disciplined and work ethic. And I don't feel anybody is born disciplined, you learn discipline. And the crazy thing is the first time I ever saw you was like three years ago, I was in Miami and um, I was driving, it was probably like 12 o'clock at night and we was coming from a restaurant and I was driving back to Fountain Blue to um, get changed to go out to the club. L literally, this is just a random Friday, yeah. 12 o'clock at night. And I'm driving, and I see somebody running opposite of traffic. How many years ago was this, please? It was like three years ago, that's what gotcha. I'm saying. So I see, him, I see somebody running opposite of traffic, and as I get closer, I'm like, it's champ. It was by himself. <laughs> and it was so crazy because you weren't training for a fight. You were actually already, I think you was already retired. But it's like you're running, up hundreds of millions of dollars, 50 and 0, not training for a fight, and you're still running at 12 o'clock at night, randomly in Miami. So it's like, talk about that level of discipline and commitment because they see, they see the jewelry, they see the chain, they see the lifestyle, but I don't think that they understand the commitment that you've put in for your whole entire life. Well, my philosophy, I just look at it like this. When you just look out here in the world today, you have Mexicans, support Mexicans, Puerto Ricans, support 
Puerto Ricans. Dominicans support Dominicans. Chinese support Chinese. Japanese support Japanese. But when it comes to blacks, we tear each other down. Yeah. And, and so my philosophy has been never stop getting it. So when you look at, you look at Bill Gates, you look at Warren Buffett, you look at these guys, and you see these guys, they can be in their 70s, 80s, and, and you, look, you can look at the, the Waltons family that own you know, Walmart and Walgreens. They can continue to make money when they're 80, 90. But we never had nothing to say. You know, when I go out and do just exhibitions or I come do speaking engagements or I make an appearance, then it's like, oh, Floyd Mayweather is hurting for money. No, it's just that retirement for everyone, for, for each and every one of us is different. My retirement is to do what I want to do yes. as long as I'm happy. Um, Clap it up for that. And... You know, I don't always talk about different things that I'm doing. You know, what I'm working on right now in New York City, I know you guys, if you guys haven't seen one of my buildings, is One Summit, you know. Um, yes. You know, it's the yeah. actually, it's one of the, the tallest commercial buildings in the world. So just in New York alone, I got nine skyscrapers. Yeah. What's the address of that building? <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> so what I'm working on, I want you guys to know this. I got a casino coming to New York City and Times, Times Square. Square. Wow. That's, you're part of that, yeah. Clap it up for that. They, that's I, incredible. I, I, yeah. That's big. That's so, big. That's huge. Uh, I just saw that. Uh, Caesars. Yes, I got a casino. Um, SL Green is a company that I've been working with for so many years. And Andrew Mathias, you know, great business guy. This is what he told me one day. We took a walk. We was in New York. We was taking a walk. He said, you see that building right there? He said, yeah. We said, we own that. You see this building? We own it. So we was walking and walking. Then he said, you know, a boxer makes money when he boxing. A football player makes money, money when he playing football. Basketball player makes money when he playing basketball. He said, but New York real estate, you make money when you sleep. Mm -hmm. So. Yes. That's so a bar. That's a big one. So I said, so I said, okay. So we start, we start, I started off something small with him in the beginning. You know, I started off probably five million. That was just in the beginning. That was years ago. Something small. <laughs> yeah. well, at the time, what was the percentage of the net worth that was? Like roughly. Well, actually, to, at, to the, at, the, at that particular time, even though that was so many years ago, I mean, years and years. So just off that five million, I was getting on the 18th every month, I would get a, um, a nice, a great, a good, good check. <laughs> like 20% retirement. Like what? Like somebody's yearly salary good I, check? Or? I mean, it was it was good it was good money for, <laughs> for that. Okay. I, what, put it like this: yeah. everything isn't for everybody. Sure. So I'm going to I'm going to help these people. And I'm gonna give them Jews. I'm gonna drop Jews. I'm gonna, I'm gonna teach them about generational wealth. I'm gonna talk yes. about my life, my ups, my downs. But everything ain't for everybody. That's gotcha. true. You know, some people say Mayweather worth a hundred million. Some say two hundred. Some say a billion. Nobody would never really know. Because I'm doing business worldwide. Yes. So, yeah. I got, so, as you were talking, I, I slowly tucked my Rolex under my sleeve. Um, I know, right? Sky, Sky, uh, Sky, uh, Sky. Yeah, a little Sky. Sky I mean, it, 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 ain't, it ain't the chandelier that you're wearing, but um, <laughs> I, I, I'm always got interested. Johnny still got his well, you know, presidential. You bought the little Prezi out. Yeah. It no, it's not little. No, it's not a little. I say little. It's, 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 it's a little. It's not little. It's a little. That's a 40. People. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's 40. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Money knows. Yeah. No, we ain't, we ain't nothing little over here. It's the biggest. <laughs> with the best. Let him know but, the but I, I, I'm, I'm I, brought, I brought mine out. I mean, that's what, 18 million? <laughs> yeah, 18, million. 18, million. 18 million. How much in value has that went up since you got it? I don't really know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I brought that up for a reason, right? Because a lot of times people will see the lavish spending, right? Yeah. They don't see the business side of you. And so I wonder, is there a balance that you have or, or something like a, a check off where you're like, all right, if I've accumulated this, I'll now treat myself. Is there a balance with, when it comes to investing versus your spending? Um, we should all treat ourselves. Absolutely. Hey. <laughs> but this is my advice 
to everyone in this room. My advice, please take it. If you make a hundred thousand, put fifty thousand up. Yes. You make if you make two million, put a million up. Cause I believe in putting up money for a rainy day, because you don't ever know what can happen. Yeah. A lot of us didn't expect for the pandemic to, to happen. You know, shit happens. Yeah. You know, it's just that I'm happy that I made smart investments and I was good through the whole pandemic and I make sure my whole staff and my team was good. But everyone is not me, but I'm gonna push I, I'm here to push everybody to tell everybody every day we wake up, we got a chance and we got a choice. Yeah. All any of us can be great. You know, just because what I feel is great, you may not feel is great. What's great to you on a daily what what, what are you What is great to me? Um just being able to, we, you know, we take things for granted. Yes. You know, being able to see, you know, having 10 fingers, having 10 toes, being able to walk, you know, being able to taste, being able to smell. Because if we look at it, because I was speaking to a guy the other day and uh, he was telling me about committing suicide. I'm like, yo, you tripping. Yeah. You know, and imagine all the people that that's not in your, in, that's not in your predicament. Yeah. They got a choice and got a chance where someone got to help them walk. And, you know, they got to have a tube to talk. So we take a lot of things for granted, you know, just in life, just in general. And I don't take nothing for granted. And, and you say, what's great, just being able to spend time with my children, pushing them to be great, telling them whatever you want to accomplish in life, go for it. I'm not telling you to be like me. Be better than me. Yeah. So let me ask you this, as far as on the business side, you transitioned the game of boxing, the sport of boxing, and 24-7. Um, yes. That's yes. your idea. A show that I created, yes. And then now you see UFC doing it. Every, it's, Everybody it's remixing it. So what, what was in your brain? Well, it's, a lot you, of thing, it's a lot of things I created. You know, nobody would put, be putting the money to the air if it wasn't for me. It's a lot of things. <laughs> Tell us about what you created in the IP. You created the money phone. <laughs> there it is. Well, but Yeah, so 24-7. So what, what gave you that? idea to chronicle your training camp and all of that just being outside the box you know not want to not want to be like everyone else like sometimes you may see i may post a photo of it's more like it's okay to be different just because i may not dress like everyone else they're like oh we don't like this well you're not if you're not worldwide you're just domestic <laughs> hey if, say we want to be worldwide if you're doing you know i'm i'm uh, you got to realize I'm cutting deals worldwide each and every day. You, I'm all around the world cutting deals. You know, I just was just in Abu Dhabi, Dubai, Abu Dhabi, Dubai, Rome, Israel, and um, I'm jet setting. <laughs> <laughs> jet setting. I ain't, and it, it, it's not really bragging if you're really doing it. So I'm really doing it. So I'm not bragging. So most time you see, you know, on social media is to post. It's your so it's your platform to post what you want to post. It's my platform, so only thing I'm doing is posting what what I only have. So when you see a garage with a ton of black cars, that's just one of my houses. Those are my cars. But guess what? The same people in this room can have the same stuff. So yes. like when you saw, because you used to be Pretty Boy Floyd, Absolutely. and you was extremely successful, but you changed to Money Mayweather, and that changed the game. So when you transitioned that. Were you looking at it like, I, right, I know people's going to hate, but this is good marketing, and this is what I need to take my career to the next level. No more pretty boy, now it's money. So I want to get this right. I just, I just want to get this right. So I'm a kid that comes from poverty, comes from nothing. Seven of us in a one-bedroom, mother on drugs, dad career didn't go good. Dad was ended up in prison, and I beat all odds and worked extremely hard to get, the, get it the legal way. And, and I'm proud to boast and brag about getting it the legal way. Slap it up for that. Let's not discount that. So now, my own people is like, fuck him. We don't like him because he's successful. Too clean cut. It, it's, it, if you, if you winning, if, if, I thought everybody in this room wanted to be a winner in life. Y'all want to be winners? Yeah. Say I'm a winner. So if we want to be winners, we only can follow winners. I mean, I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm not the one to knock anyone. You know, whatever you want to do in life, go for it. You know, um, I just can't be stopped. At whatever I put my mind to do, I can do. Yeah. You know, you, did you, you know, when I was walking in New York as a kid, did I ever, when I was young, did I ever think that 
I was going to own a skyscraper. I didn't think about it, yeah. but now I do. Own nine. That's incredible. Can you talk to us about maybe one of the biggest lessons you learned from Leonard Ellaby? Um, one you may have taken away from Vince McMahon and then someone else who's a, a mentor to you that's had an impact on your career. Well, they say, well, they say you are, you are, the five people that you surround yourself with, that's who you are. Yes. So, of course, um, I, you know, Roy Disney is one of my friends who owns Walt Disney World. Yeah. Um, Robert Smith, the richest black man in America. Yes. Um, and the list, um, Mark Holiday from SL Green. Um, Al Heyman, these, all these guys are, it's not just, it's not just the money. Yeah. You know, I, many, I, I've dealt with million, millions and billions of dollars. It's about building relationships. Yeah. Say they talk about that and he always mentions that. It's, it's, it's all about, it's not really the money because you can make a lot of money, but if you don't have a game plan, it's going to, you, 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 you're rich, you're not wealthy because rich is when you got it for a short period of time. Wealth yeah. is long term. Yeah. Mm. So. One of the things um, that we've noticed, obviously you said you were in Dubai, in Abu Dhabi, we saw you there, is that you're, you're doing business deals. Like, I, I see the exhibition fights, but I'm like, he's just doing that, but there's something bigger going on. Obviously, I think it's the yes. deals. And so when you're looking at, what are you looking for when deals come across to you, right? Because I'm sure there's probably a team that says, all right, Floyd, we have this. What are you looking for to say, all right, yes, we're going with this? Because, I mean, nine skyscrapers, that's, that's pretty impressive, man. Well, you, well I'm, I don't want to be the only smart person with my team, so I got to choose his chess. Mm -hmm. It's chess, it's real life, real life chess out here in the world. So I want to make sure that, you know, I got smart individuals that I, that surround me. That's going to tell me, don't do, that's not smart. You know, I've been working on buying <clears throat> an NBA team outright. You know, there's a difference between. Clap it up for that. We look. You know, me and actually um, one of my other other business partners. Brent Johnson, he's here. So we've been working on the NBA team for a while now. You know, it's kind of, it's rough. Vegas? Um, it could be the Vegas franchise. It could be the Seattle franchise. Yeah. Or I could be buying a franchise that's already up and running. Mm. Gotcha. So um, the first offer, we offered them a little bit over $2 billion for majority ownership. Um, do we got, do I have it? Absolutely, absolutely I have it. But Clap it up for that. <laughs> <laughs> of course, I'm kidding me. But it didn't happen. It didn't happen overnight. It didn't happen overnight. Mm -hmm. um, it's 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 a lot. It's a lot when you have so many different businesses all around all around the world. Actually, it's a lot. It's not easy. Can I, can I just follow that up really quick? Because I wonder when you walk into a business deal, right? Are they respecting you as Floyd Mayweather, the businessman, or are they looking at you as Floyd Mayweather, the Hall of Fame boxer, the greatest of all time? What, uh, exactly, right? TB. Um, what is that like for you? Well, I had to be. I had to be somewhat intelligent and smart to be able to make a hundred million and 300 million. And actually at my age now, I'm still going out there picking up 20 and 30 million for 15 minutes and 20 minutes. I'm able <laughs> Greatest to- Greatest trade ever. So, Clap it up. So, so it's obvious- my numbers. It's obvious that I'm the smart one. If I'm able to make the people pay and I'm beating YouTubers. <laughs> <laughs> Good point. So let me let me ask you this. Cause this is one thing that I always admired about you. I don't think you got enough credit for it because you hear Le we always see LeBron always getting credit for working with his team or black young men. But when I look at you and you see Al Heyman and Leonard Ellerby and your circle is all black as far as on that business side on, on the boxing, um, like the forefront people. So you were early on that. And was that important to you or you just, it just kind of happened that way? Well, of course, I'm going to always I'm going to always love my people first. Always. But in business, you know, I got to think about my family first. I got to think about my grandson, my daughter, yeah. my two daughters, my two sons. I got to think about them first. So when it comes to business, it's not no, it's not no certain color. I work with everybody. Mm -hmm. it, it's just like that. 
But as far as my team, it just ended up, you know, my team, we, we, I have a real diverse team. You know, we got people from all walks of life that's on my team that, I, that I'm with every day. And I, and I love my team. But when it comes to business, I do business with, every, with everyone, honestly speaking. Quick, no, go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead. Uh, quick question for you. You talked about using the hate as fuel, and it's something that I struggle with, but I also use it as fuel. At what point does using negative energy become detrimental to your life? Or do you think it's because we grow with childhood traumas that makes us activate a higher gear when we hear something negative towards us? Um, well, they said if you want to going back and forth and I and I really want to apologize cuz a lot of times I go back and you know I, I never I was always on 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 the internet I was always the reaction I wasn't the action because I never like I said before I love my people first yeah. I'm never going you know but sometimes you can shoot at me you can shoot at me and I really won't say nothing but you know I got to shoot back you know I got to teach my my children and my family how to def defend themselves you know not just in the ring so a lot of times when people are, people don't really like when you are, when you continue to be successful. You know, it, it, it's even like a woman. A woman can be in your life and she's no longer in your life and she can think that, you know, the grass is green on, on the other side. She think that you're not gonna continue to be successful. Shout out to my exes. <laughs> <laughs> you you could have been here with me and Floyd and Troy Rashad, but shout out Bay. But you chose the other wise. Wise. <laughs> and, 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 and it's and, and it's nothing that works both ways. So I don't want to be in this room. I don't want to be biased. It works both ways. True. You know, a lot of times a man like me, I've never been with a woman. And we, when we went our separate ways, I was like, oh, I don't want to see her be successful. More power to you. Yeah. That's not going. That's not going to change everything that I got. That's not going to change my drive and my desire uh, to be great at whatever I'm. You know, to be great at whatever investments I'm trying to do or whatever I'm trying to go for in life. How do you um, deal with, you know, managing people? Because you obviously, you know, have Mayweather promotions. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, you set the precedent for boxers, you know, becoming their, their own boss. And you have one of the, the greatest young talents on your stable, um, Javante Davis. But I've seen, rec seen recently that he, he's actually looking to, to leave. So how does that relationship work? How, like, how does that work as far as, you know, grooming somebody, getting them to a point, and then having some differences? Um, I've always been a gentleman. I've always been respectful. And there's nothing like taking a kid that, ha that come from the same background as you and helping them and put them in a position to become a multi-millionaire. You know, you meet a kid, he just come, he come up to you for an autograph. You sign an autograph for him, then I tell him, in a few years when you get older, I'm going to work with you and I'm going to make you world champion someday. Years later, he st I started working with him, um, helped him, pushed him to be great. And if he feels like, you know, he, his wings, he's, he's grew wings where he can fly and become his own boss, more power to him. Okay. From, okay. from, from your standpoint. Because that's not going to... Yeah. I, I, I didn't get into the sport of boxing you know, you know, after I retired, to not want to see fighters grow. I want to, if I can, if he feels like he can surpass Floyd Mayweather or be the next Floyd Mayweather, I'm here to push you. Go for it. Yeah, from that, true, clap it up for that. But that, I'm, I'm looking at it from that standpoint as like, that's the sport of boxing, right? Mm -hmm. Like some guys may say that they have some of the skills that you have and probably won't be as great as you, but from the business side of boxing, is there somebody that you think can actually replicate the formula that you've put forth? Because I feel like we, they, they used to call De La Hoya the cash king, and then obviously you had, you have the number one, two, three, and four. Do you have the fifth highest viewed fight? You might. You, you got four out of the top five, I know like for sure. Yeah. Like in the top 10 fights yeah. in the history of boxing, right. six of them is mine. Yeah. Wow. That's, Okay. Pop it up for that, please. Pop it up, please. And so some people, they used to criticize you for that, right? They would say, like, oh, look at the style of fight, but people are watching it. And so, it's, well, it, from a business standpoint, let's get, right. let's get this right. Go ahead. Late, say late bloomers. A lot of late bloomers because I had, like, a 78% knockout ratio 
when I was at the, at a small weight class. Yeah. So a lot of times when you go up, you know, the impact with the weight, when I, when I went from in Olympics in 96, cause I turned professional in 96. So, you know, I was, I'm still competing right now. So I've been a professional for 26 years and I'm still able to articulate well, still sharp, still smart. That's one of the great things about my career. They are gonna say, what's the best thing about your career? Well, what the best thing about my career is I retired on my own terms when I wanted to and, I, and I'm my own boss. Pop it up for that. The big boss. <laughs> Um, of course, you're investing in real estate. You have TMT promotions. You have business dealings with CGI. Um, are you currently investing in the stock market? And if there are any stocks that you are in love with currently at the moment? Um, I've been lately, you know, I'm going to be honest. It was something small. I've been trade. I was trading the last few months. Let's go. I, I've been making 100000 a month. I mean, they're just. Okay. <laughs> well, what, what are you trading? But it's nothing. But it's nothing. I, it's not like I'm trading that big. Just one of my guys. He's he's the best at it. Got you. But, 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 but you know what? Actually, but we'll talk about that. <laughs> one sec. Hold on. I'm building up. Should I read the disclaimer first? I, I need everybody to know this. Within the next, um, the next few months, I'm building up. I got a platform that I got for everyone that's who wants to invest in the next, and then in the next twenty years you'll get a great return on your money because what we don't teach blacks is about long term. Yeah. You know, a lot of times we think about just right now. You know, it, it's, it, it's just like, and we, can, and we can't knock black athletes that come from poverty and they want, and they see Floyd Mayweather with watches and all these cars, they're like, shit, I want that too. Yeah. But they must realize it didn't happen overnight. I fought thousands of fights for free before I even turned professional. Mm. You know, my first professional fight, even though, you know, I got good money for, I'm saying for, from the, the company that I signed to, you know, it was a good signing bonus. But for my first fight, I made 25,000, mm. you know? And now, you know, 25,000 is valet money. <laughs> so <laughs> clap that up. Where, where are you parking up? <laughs> you got a big team. I got, I got, I got, I'm Floyd Mayweather. I got to pop a little shit. <laughs> I got to talk, I got to talk a little shit. I thought you were going to say it was fuel money, but all right. Valet <laughs> money. Um, the city of Las Vegas is pretty much, you're like the mayor there. Like, you got a residency at MGM. All your fights, I think, was at MGM. You got your boxing gym there. You talked about the NBA team. Like, what? But was we, don't, it? We, don't, we don't want to put ourselves in a box. We put ourselves in a box when because it, it, it looks like I can I can only go one place. Let, let the world. I no, 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 for sure. I, I sell out worldwide. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Okay. But I'm just saying, you, you <laughs> still, yeah. still, yeah. okay, still to this but, day. <laughs> but uh, but you run Vegas. Uh, but my whole point is my, my whole the, my, the earth is my turf. I love that. <laughs> you know, you know, you know you I, I like to say you that. run the world, Floyd. You have to train people how to think about I, I, you. I, I, I gotta say the earth is my turf because it's so crazy that you know you be hearing this stuff nowadays where it's bad for our people when they say, "Oh, you got to check in." No, I'm. I'm the, a lot of times, how do we have to check in? You know, when they be seeing these guys talk about, well, you got to check in. I got to check in. You don't even own, you don't even own, you don't even own no property in the city. <laughs> and talking about people got to check hey. in. <laughs> you got to own, you got to own something before somebody got to check in. That's usually, and my that's thing usually is, how it works, yeah. Only I say, how can I address if you don't own no property? Well, I say, I'm already checking in one place when I go to somewhere. Where I don't have a home. Huh. I'm checking into the hotel. <laughs> Rightfully so. Rightfully so. <laughs> To talk to us just amongst friends. If you had to start over from scratch, and let's say we needed to make $100 million in a year, what would be your blueprint to do so? And can you tell us how you use the jewelry and the lifestyle to market all the businesses? But y'all want to learn how to make 100 or no? Okay, um, how... Um, y'all not excited I, enough. I don't, I don't really want to... I do want to tell them, but then, I, you know, I don't, I don't want it to get saturated. Gotcha. I'm going to tell y'all. <laughs> <laughs> How I'm um, in, in 36 in 36 months, of course, with, with one of my new investments, I would be making 300 million a month. But what investment is that? J just in, in real estate. I agree. I got you. And I'm, I'm heavy in real estate. I'm, I'm real heavy in real estate. Uh, even though, you know, I got my own liquid. 
you know, if you, that, that means cash for for those. I break it down in layman's terms. <laughs> uh, even though I, I got, you know, I got a lot of cash. OPM. Okay. OPM. You don't you don't always have to use your money. That's why it's very important for y'all to make sure y'all keep your credit your credit right. Talk to us about very that. important. And so, you know, the blacks, the Hispanics can go out there and get loan, get certain loans. Um, I'm also working on uh, me and some of my um, business partners. I'm getting a bank, actually. So it's so many different things I'm working on. That's incredible. Clap it up for that. So I'm able to, so, so certain individuals are able to come to me and get loans so they can start. You know, if you if you don't want to start big in real estate, start with it like a duplex, get you a fourplex, and then you slowly grow from there. So, I wonder what your relationship is like with other athletes, right? Because obviously we see you making these business moves, mm -hmm. and obviously we, we we talked about the CGI deal, two hundred fifty million dollar deal during COVID. But I don't see m many athletes following your blueprint, and I, I'm I'm almost confused as to why. Why do you think more athletes, uh, more people with you know come from entertainment, are not following this blueprint that you've laid out very clearly, and you're doing it in real time? Well. Out here in the world today, it has a lot to do with control. You know, even like, I don't want to say, but I believe in having my own brand so no one can mute me out. I believe in standing on my own two feet. I never had to deal with a major a shoe brand, and I still was able to make over a billion dollars. So I don't, I, I get tired of hearing it. I need them. I need them. I need them. You don't need nobody but yourself. Like I said, we all got choice. We wake up with a choice and a chance every day. I don't need nobody but myself. And of course, I need of course I need you guys to continue to support me. <laughs> but um we we have to stop always thinking that we need some we need certain brands to to solidify us. You know? I can have my own I have my own brand and I didn't beat guys that, that was with a major brand, you know? And even like Pacquiao. Pacquiao was with, he was signed to Nike. Nike, yep. Right, he had a Nike deal. Yeah. But that, that's not gonna change the outcome. <laughs> talk that talk. <laughs> not gonna change the outcome. It's not gonna 270 change. million later. <laughs> no, the, the three. 300 million later. No, Sorry. You can't, you, don't short me 30. It's cause the pay-per-view keeps coming in, Floyd. I, I, we can't, yeah, yeah, but. I gotta update it, man, it keeps coming in. Yeah, but I was able to do something that, you know, a lot, a lot of athletes wasn't able to do. You know, just, um, they believe that they needed someone else instead of just roll the dice, bet on yourself. I'd rather take a chance and bet on myself than betting on anyone else. Yeah. Uh, so last, last, last no, question. No, 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 last no. Qu the reason why you got to bet on yourself, because every day, all of us wake up, we look in the mirror. Yeah. You know, we say to ourselves, people will always let you down, but you will never let yourself down. I love it. That's a fact. Good question for you. Um, when assembling a team, what are some key things that you look for in people that you're going to bring into your team? And some people call me the master investor, so I got to ask you a question. If I if I made y'all money, can I get a hell yeah? If I write a check for all losses, it's, it's the one thing that we ha we have to look look for. Yeah. This 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 that trump that's bigger than love, trust. Yeah. Because remember this, I would I would rather be with a woman that I trust over a woman that I love. That's and, big facts. And they say, well, wh why is that, Floyd? No, fellas, clap it up. <laughs> I know some of y'all days like, you better not listen to Ian. <laughs> this is the reason why. We have people that we love. We have people that's in our lives that we love that we don't trust. You can have an uncle or, or aunt that's on drugs. And you can be gone. You can run to the store and they can come over your house. You call home like, who? who's there? Um, uh, Uncle Bobby here, uh, my Aunt Anna here. They be like, I'm on my way back. You know why? <laughs> That's funny. You, you love them, but you don't trust them. Yeah. <laughs> so remember this, it's people that we love that we don't, uh, that we don't trust. That's why I say trust, it, it trumps it all. Make some noise for Floyd Money Mayweather, ladies and gentlemen. All right. Legendary. So uh, there you have it. My name is Money. My name is Money. Money Mayweather. Yes. Lloyd. Yeah. The champ. <laughs> it's the champ. Only He's drawing on the only 18 million on the wrist. 18 million on the wrist. Like and, and even with that, and I said it before and I'll say it again.
I understand the showmanship in that because when he came out, the whole building stood up and took pictures. When Don Peoples came out, he should have had the same reaction and didn't. Yeah. So when people are like, hey, why are you interviewing these people? I'm like, because that those are the people y'all clicking on. Yeah. Yo, my, my while we were interviewing, my, my phone was just buzzing, like, yo, his necklace, his necklace. How are you even looking at him? Yes. His necklace is blinding. And I'm like, and Don just told you the five cities to invest in <laughs> like, from his personal portfolio, gave you real. I'm like, he's giving you his real shit that he shouldn't even say. But 18 million on the wrist, diamond necklace, no lenses in his glasses. Yep. Pretty legendary. Different. Pretty legendary. Um, Different. Okay. Do, do you think him not having any major endorsements made him become the businessman that he is? Because that's a huge mistake on Nike or Under Armour. Somebody should have been a sponsor. I think it helped. I think he um he used to be sponsored by Nike and then he lost his you Reebok. Know, Reebok. He had a Reebok deal. He had he, you know Floyd had he's had some issues in the past. So and and boxes never traditionally have never really become. Manny Pacquiao had a Nike deal, but mm -hmm. you never really seen boxes with too much um. Yeah. endorsements anyway and floyd was just living that life where he didn't really care you know cursing and you know he's not a a, a product friendly type of person so i can understand why why brands wouldn't want to um wouldn't want to um endorse him because it's like you never know what's going to happen but also to his to his credit he never cared about it because he made mm -hmm. so much money that the endorsements didn't, of course, nobody's going to turn down, you know, a great endorsement deal if it makes sense, but he wasn't impressed for it. I think he had Hublot, like he would wear Hublot on his shorts. They mm -hmm. probably gave him like, you know, a couple, like a fight deal. Yeah, a couple million dollars just to wear that, but it, it wasn't anything crazy. But I mean, as far as the, the interview, let's get into this conversation. What are your thoughts on the interview with Floyd Mayweather? You want my honest opinion? Yes. I think, and I, and I said it on stage, um, cause some people are like, oh, he's capping or he's not answering. I'm like, there were some answers that he chose not to give. And this has happened before with Dave Rubenstein when I asked about daily routine and work ethic. This happened with Josh Brown. I think Cuban kind of skated one question, right? I think um, there were some things he didn't want to answer cause he didn't want publicly known. And also as an investor, this is the truth for everyone listening. It is no one's job on earth to give you their secrets to make you rich if it took them 10 to 15 years to make them rich. I'm the only idiot that does it. And as soon as Morgan Stanley signs his deal, that'd be <laughs> over with too, or Meta, whoever comes first. So um, I, I've never known a public a person to give so much and then be get hated for it. I'm like, what? They're like, yo, the rants bother you? I gave you ideas to make millions. What? Okay. Um, so I think he showed the road some questions, but I think from as big as his brand is, and we're seeing it happen in real time, which I told everyone it would, but Tom Brady Giselle, everyone who endorsed FTX is getting sued. Now, a lot of creators and celebrities that are the back NFTs of last year, when I told everyone they would crash, are now getting sued. Because if you don't know who the executives are of these projects or tokens or coins, you're going to go to the biggest and highest name profile. So let's say he was investing in, in a company that was like 40 to $80 a share. He can move the market because we would have seen academics act. Please tag us next time. I love you. I know it's probably your team, but when it gets reposted, it's going to be like, well, Floyd invested in this company and you should. And if it doesn't work out, he's going to be the one to get sued. So I understood it around those questions. Um, but I want to ask you guys, what did you <laughs> Think of the interview. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna go with you on the shoulder roll, but I think context is key. Like some things make headlines and some things are context. And so to an uneducated audience, when somebody says, like, I'm gonna make three hundred million dollars a month on my next investment, it feels like he's saying yeah. that he's personally gonna do it. To a you know, more educated audience, which is what we have here. Gotcha. And gonna, that's our job is to educate people, is to say, All right, well, he's part of an investment group, mm -hmm. right? which is invested into a project that could generate $300 million a month. Well, that sounds yeah. like, so how can we even fathom that? Well, the next week when you hear that MGM is trying to put a casino in the middle of Times Square, and he's part of the group that's investing in that, yep. 300 million doesn't seem like that's something that's far-fetched. Well, if he's part of the group, then yeah, that's his investment that he's making. 
Is he making all the 300? No, but no. context is that he's an owner in that. It's the same type of context when we're talking about the nine skyscrapers. Like people are like, well, how does he own nine skyscrapers? Well, if you do the research on CGI, who he made a $250 million investment with, mm -hmm. he's part of the investment group that owns these buildings. And so if he's part of the investment group, is that his investment? Yeah, so the, the, the context around the answers is important. It's key. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm sure, you know, Floyd likes to make a scene. So when he says these things, it's like, all right, well, it's, it, it's me. I'm the money guy, right? But when you, you, you look at it, it's like, all right, well, yeah, that, that's true, but let's put that into context. Yes, he's in part of an investment group and there's no no shame in that. He's an owner in yeah. that. And he feels, he should speak in, in those terms. I, I mean, if, 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 if Revolt throw 900 million at y'all tomorrow, you get a right to say, man, we came up on 900 million. Exactly. Even from Texas, I mean, like, and he said it on stage. He's like, hey, I use the negative energy, which is a trauma response, is why I asked him, like, how do you steer away from that? Because that can't be a driving force. Notice he didn't turn, he was very vulnerable in that interview. He didn't turn that energy on until he got the feedback from the audience. I was very mindful of like how his energy shifted to like, okay, if y'all want to go there, because let's be real. And I know people be like, well, they're murderers who have more money and it shouldn't matter. But like when a person has more money than me, I shut up and ask questions. He doesn't have to tell you what fucking stock he was investing in that he's making a hundred grand a month off of. Doesn't have to. But you have to be mindful when talking to people. And I'll say this too, and it's not to kiss ass or brown nose anybody, but you don't know if his team will go back and watch the footage and find out who that is and block you out of deals. I said all the time, Michael Backner came on, didn't like the commentary, <laughs> uh, turned his head to act like he wasn't bothered and acted like he didn't watch the game. Then a lot of you who went to go apply for jobs in other industries in the finance space found out that you were blacklisted from getting a job anywhere. Charlemagne always says it. You cannot be mad at anyone's response to your attack. Be mindful. So, and Rashad, I tell y'all every week, speak with grace, be, be humble. And right. Some of y'all listen, some of y'all don't. Me and Keys made an adjustment, right? <laughs> but you don't know how people are looking at you. And I tell people in Red Panda all the time, like even before I started going to the exchange, they was looking through everybody who had Red Panda and I buy on IG for months before I got there. So be careful and be mindful. I think he did show the role a couple of things, but I do understand while some of the information he probably steered away from. But kudos to the champ for doing it. Like, that's still a legend. I think we've gotten so accustomed to having people on that we don't understand how hard it is in, to make this work. Um, so whether people love the interview or not, I think you should. But when a person has amassed that kind of fortune, and the fact is he's still working on his craft every day. If I can be honest, Man, a lot of the questions people ask, those would go away if you just did the fucking work. He's still in shape. Mm -hmm. Shaw told the told his story. Hey, outside Fountain Blue, Miami. I mean, when he texted me that night, like, oh, I just saw Floyd run. It was two o'clock in the morning. Do the work. I know y'all think yeah. the traveling part is fun and carrying the Pelican bags and having it's not fun. This is what it takes. People are like, damn, you on the road again in New York? The, the money's in New York, London, and Australia and LA. I got to go to where the money, I can't get all the money out of Idaho or Omaha. Buffett has not yeah. called me yet. You have to travel it, it, to where the money is. Even what you're saying, and I know Shai's going to go in a sec, but like people are like looking at these exhibition fights that he's taking and they're like, oh, what is he doing them for? And it's like, well, do you know how to get $15 million in nine minutes? He does. Best trade ever. <laughs> when he said that, right, I'm like, like, you're the greatest trader. But on top of it, right, there's a there's a tax incentive, there's, there's a tax play that's involved in that. And he's obviously doing a lot of development deals out there. So there's a reason why he's out there. He's not just out there, yeah. obviously, yeah, to, to practice his craft and make a quick 20 to 15 to 20 million. That's incredible. Mm -hmm. But he's also out there making business deals too. So that's a part of it Like people have to realize. like, And when we were out in Abu Dhabi and in Dubai, we saw the level of development development and where they're going with the development. They're not done, right? There's, there's places that are still untapped. We saw what's happening in Saudi Arabia over the past couple of weeks, obviously when, when Khaled and, and Swiss, out to Swiss, because Swiss has been going to Saudi Arabia for the past two to three years and people were just like, what is he doing? He's buying camels, he's camel racing. 
No, nah, he's building infrastructure out there and he's making it a place where people want to come and need to need to come so they can see for themselves as an investment opportunity. But uh, people should be looking at Floyd in the same way rather than saying like, uh, he's taking an exhibition fights with YouTubers. So I mean, that's and also, part of it. And if he's still a draw internationally and going back to taking credit for what you've done, he was very clear on not being labeled as the king of Vegas. I'm an international draw because who knows how that may affect his deal. So if he can draw, let's say 20,000 people for a fight, it gives you a little bit more leverage in the land deals that I'm sure he's trying to do. Or the commercial deals. I went to that one tower, I mean, uh, amazing, beautiful. Now, if he can create one of those out, out there and then maybe another one in London, another one in China, now you have a massive portfolio and he's used his celebrity to draw more money into commercial deals. Like, and even in those instances, I'm sure, he had to do a deal with the tourism board to do something over there. You're not just gonna come over here and bop all these buildings and then bring your nine women over here. Like there, uh, everyone, there's levels to this. You on every level, you have to earn your keep. Like there isn't a person that I have not met on the street that I don't feel that I can't out trade. Guess what though? Even learning how to make it in that seat to trade, that's a different skill set. It's not just one. Going back to being super efficient, can you do the job of 10 people? And once I get this niceness down and I listen to Rashad about being politically correct and not upset nobody, baby, y'all in trouble. Y'all got about two more months. <laughs> Let me do my little media training. Game over. Game set I, match. I, I think it's important to understand, especially like, I feel like when you come to an event, we just did an event at Howard, we'll talk about that at the end. But like when you come to an event, um, whether it's Market Mondays, whether it's Art Basel, whether it's Invest Fest, any event that we've been able to curate or been a part of, there's three parts to it. There's an educational part to it, there's an inspirational part to it, and then there's a motivational part to it. Mm -hmm. And what I realized is that you need all three because if you just provide just information, people, they say only retain and probably 5% of the information that they receive at live events. So it's like, you could just talk for four hours of just straight information and you probably won't remember 95% of it. Absolutely. Um, and this is why even like, I've been to church one time in my life. Uh, I had a client that was a pastor, uh, rest in peace to her. Um, Wait, you've only been to church once. Me? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I'm not Christian. I didn't grow up Christian. So they were oh, okay. me to go to okay. church. I don't know. Okay. But, but, um, but when I did go to church, it was, uh, it was, it was, uh, um, interesting experience because it was a lot of singing, dancing. It was like, you know, Baptist church. And it was only preaching for probably 15% of the, of the time. Yeah. And the rest of it was more of a show, but I understand it because it's like you get people's attention and you have to keep them energized and you have to keep them, you know, it's, it's, it's a production. So for them to actually be able to understand what you, what you're preaching. Yeah. So I say that to say everything at the show is not just for just educational purposes. Mm -hmm. Like Don Peebles came on and that was 25, 30 minutes of just straight information, actionable items where yep. you can actually go outside today and break that down. And we'll probably put that out too at some point, but it was like, he gave five cities of where you as an investor right now can go to those five cities and, and his opinion, those are five cities that are beneficial. Then he went so far to actually say why they're beneficial from a mm -hmm. tax standpoint, from an investment standpoint, da, da, da. he actually broke down. Okay. This is how we're developing. This is the, this is the financing. Da, da, da. So this is real actionable steps where he's extremely transparent, giving his, his blueprint, providing information in real time. Uh, Peter Tuckman providing information in real time. When we, we, when, when Ian speaks, when Troy speaks, providing information in real time. I think Floyd provided information in real time as well. But what you have to understand is that everybody has different levels of understanding and, and having a, a level of explanation. Mm -hmm. Some of the best things that you can actually do is align yourself with people that are smarter than you. And for him to work with somebody like Al Heyman, right? Yeah, that's like that's what some of the best gems that he gave was Al Heyman, the guy that he, I forgot his name, but the gentleman that he said would schooled him on, on New York City um, skyscrapers and actually got him in the investment deals as far as the skyscrapers. Like if you listen in, everything that he says is aligned with somebody else. 
Absolutely. Like in Abu Dhabi and in, in Dubai, Al Heyman, um, the real estate, everything that he does, he's aligning himself with other people that are experts in the field. He's an expert in boxing, right? But that doesn't mean that he can't get money in other areas. Yeah. But it does, doesn't necessarily mean that he has to be an expert in other areas as well. Like, you know, align yourself with good people, be able to benefit from their information, from their knowledge, and then you leverage what you bring. And he he's changed the game in so many different aspects. Like I said, from 24 seven to, you know, the, the money, um, the Floyd to pretty boy Floyd to money Mayweather to the, to the HBO, um, deal to the Showtime deal. So I just feel like, you know, it's, you're not going to get the same thing from every single person. Yeah. Every single person is not going to provide the same level of actually insight, but sometimes it's the inspiration and even the social media clips like those clips viral because it's like it's inspirational it's inspirational that's why those clips are going viral because it's like okay yeah. floyd owns nine skyscrapers the, there's not a real there's not really a lot of context behind that but it's it's the achievement alone is enough though oh well, exactly so and and and, and physically sometimes you just got to be in, a, in an environment sometimes you just got to be in an environment where you're motivated now you mix that motivation with information. Now it's like a, a fire. And that's what, that's what the events do. Where it's like, okay, you get motivated. You get entertained when Jada Kiss comes on. You get educated. And now it's like, now you have all, everything working for you. You're inspired, you're motivated, and you're educated, you're and you're entertained, and you're yeah. entertained as well. So now you have a, a full battery pack in your in your back to actually go outside and, and try to because ultimately no matter how much information you give somebody you still got to forge your own blueprint you still got to do Facts. things your own way so it's like no matter it's like reading a book right like you could read as many books as you want to read but ultimately there's no real blueprint to success like there's no blueprint to what we do what we have done and what we are doing we get information and we get insight but ultimately we're still forging it our own way so can, can I say well, one thing about y'all and I always give you credit for never missing any shows. And there's a one day since I've known y'all that I haven't known y'all to do any work. And when people are like, Hey, what's the secret? I'm like, that's the foundation of everything. You can't take off every weekend or when things get rough or personal life is bad, or you don't feel like it. none of us feel like working every day. I don't know about y'all, maybe me 20 or 30 days out the yard, like, yeah, I'm gonna get to it today. Every other day is just like, I have to. And even sitting next to him, it wasn't because I'm looking at Floyd, which if you watch the interview in detail, Floyd is a very humble person. He was getting to it. He was essentially saying, I have to make this character to even be a draw. And that's why I asked the question, hey, what was the inspiration that you had when you had a chance to sit down with Vince McMahon? Vince McMahon was the one to told him to turn heel and be Money Mayweather, which is a spinoff of the Million Dollar Man, Ted DiBiase. And if you look, Floyd looked like Virgil a little bit, who used to be with Million Dollar Man. <laughs> As a black man, right? But you can see the correlation because Vince thinks in templates, right? So because, and let's be honest, when you grow up and do it the right way, the clean way, da da da, it didn't work for him. It wasn't the same draw as some of his contemporaries. So you can see the pain even in that, but he's telling you a blueprint. And also too, I've found when any athlete or African-American kind of forges their own way, they always find a way to be vilified. We saw it with LeBron. Whenever I ask any fan, why are you really upset that LeBron left Cleveland and went to Miami? Oh, he changed the way the NBA did business. Like, what the fuck they got to do with you? That was his personal bit, but what it did change and show agents are needed. So now yep. when I, even when I'm having conversations with agents, I'm like, why do you get this percentage when I'm a better business person than you, unless you bring something to the table? I don't give me a talent contract. I want an executive contract if I'm paying for shit. You're not supposed okay. to say that. I didn't know. We have to look at the people that are truly game changers and understand they're trying to pave a way for us to see. And we can't get caught up in those who crafted a story around how they're evil um, and my last point, to be next to him, seeing that he made all that money and Floyd isn't the smartest person on earth, it made me think a thousand times bigger. I'm like, he's making a hundred grand a month off trading and he don't even trade. I'm like, I should be doing 10 million a month. This, But 
It's a T. Harv Eggerson, a financial thermostat that you'll put a governor on yourself on for how much you should make. Everybody put in chat, what is your dream number that you want to make? Go ahead, Charm Rashad. And uh, I will say this as my last point. There's different levels of intelligence. That's true. This is yeah. This is extremely this is extremely important to understand. Um, there's different levels of intelligence. And when I look at Floyd, I look at him as a genius. So it's like LeBron James, a genius, right? Like for him to be able to do what he does on the court and see things, different things in nature. It's like there's different levels of intelligence. Mm-hmm. And in the school system, how we actually brought up, we're only able to recognize one level of intelligence, which is like book smarts, being able to recite information, being able to, you know, pass tests. That's what we deem as intelligent. But it's like me, I was never really a great student. I was never really a big reader. Um, but obviously I'm intelligent, right? So intelligence, intelligence has different, has displays itself in different ways for different people. Um, but the last thing I want to say about Floyd is that this, this also should show you that just because you're great at one thing doesn't automatically mean that you're great at another thing. He's working to become a better public speaker, but he's still learning. He's still learning. So that's part of it too, right? That's another part that I don't think we actually spoke about is that sometimes you could be, you could have all the information to, it's not easy to go over in front of 5,000 people Mm -hmm. and speak. Now you would think because, okay, you're used to fighting in front of 20,000 people. Well, that's completely different. So it's like, that has to give you guys an appreciation for what we do because it's not easy, but also understand that it's not easy to do every single thing. So, you know, part of being able to go up in front of these large crowds and provide information is being able to be comfortable speaking. And not to say that he's not, but I'm just saying, I think he's getting better at it because I know, you know, speaking to some of his team, like they're actively looking for him to become more um, public speaking so that he's working on it. So it's like that plays a part as well. It's like, you know, never, never underestimate the power of being nervous. Yeah. Right, like it's like it's not easy. I'm glad you said to, that. to go in front of you know uh, yeah. in Madison Square Garden and speak about your own personal finances. That's one of the most that's tough touchiest subjects in the world where people yeah. don't want to. That's like talking about your love life in front yes. of five thousand strangers that you know from nowhere. So yeah. just just take that into yeah. consideration. I'm, I'm glad you said that because we've never spoke about that before. But even some of the you know some of people's favorite episodes before we actually tape those episodes. We get to see people in the element where it's like, wait, I know what you guys are coming with. Like, how do I even prepare? I'm like, I'm nervous about this. Yeah. And then the episodes come out to be amazing. And you never know because they've never had to speak in the, in terms of business before. Like they, they might have spoken something in, in their field of expertise. But when it comes to business, it's a totally different thing. Now it's like, I need to know these numbers because I know these guys. Yeah. I've watched them enough. I know they're going to ask me the questions that I need to have the answers to. And so, like, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because it's a totally different experience. So kudos to everybody that steps on the platform and delivers because it's not an easy thing to do. Uh, and kudos to us for actually delivering every single time because preparing yeah. to get to know these people is, I mean, we're talking about no, no over gotcha 200 question. episodes of yeah. Market Mondays. We're talking over 200 episodes of Earn Your Leisure, not to mention assets over liabilities. The preparation to get these things done Insane. is no easy task. It's no easy task. And you and some areas we have to study, right? Because we might not be familiar with it as, as much as we, we thought we were. And we get educated during the episode, too. So I'm glad you brought that up. That, and, that's a great point. And my final point for everyone listening, you have to remember... He has achieved the financial number we are all striving to hit. <laughs> Let's take the bullshit away. This is me, Ian Dunlap, Red Panda Rebellion. Oh, this is my reflection and no one else's. We have to stop or refrain from criticizing people who have achieved the shit that we're trying to do. Just for him to be a top boxer and to have the ability to even buy that watch or jewelry as a part of his branding or to make $100 million in one fight. What? That's why I said, like, to make $20 million in nine minutes or 15 minutes, th- that's a hedge fund level trade. I know, because I'm talking to people at Citadel and GTS and Piper. Like, they're not making $20 million in 15 minutes. So let's have an appreciation for those who have hit the numbers that we want 
to achieve and learn from them. So yeah. and, and let's not let's stop acting like these things are everyday things. Like we we experience that a lot. We we like I know like Jay said that like one percent of a billion is more than people have ever seen. So we try to treat that like it's everyday. It's not an everyday an thing. An everyday thing. Him having ownership in nine scrapes, skyscrapers is not an everyday thing. That's right? Incredible. Like that's not an everyday. Him actually being in the position to be a part of a group that's going to put a casino in the middle of the that's biggest district in the world in Times Square. That's not an everyday thing, right? So him being a billionaire, it's not an everyday thing. Don Peoples being a billionaire and speaking to people nah. so fluently about what he's doing and what you should, these aren't everyday things. Like we, we experienced that over the weekend. Y'all thought that Ace Boogie line was long when he was in Times Square. Yeah. <laughs> man, wait till it's that. It's not an everyday thing, man. Yeah. Oh, shout out to Floyd. Legendary situation across the yes. board. Um, yeah, well, there you have it, folks. Um, yeah, it's been a hell of a year. Yes, Howard is. University was amazing. Shout, shout out, out to, to Howard. Shout out to Chase. Shout out to MG The Morgan. Got everybody that came out there. Julian Gordon, Ronnie Brown. Oh, well, we had an opportunity um, to announce um, on stage live at Howard that Ronnie Brown, girl CEO, hey. podcast, um, will be the newest addition to the EYO network. Really looking that's forward to that. Addition. Spoke to her for about an hour and a half after the, the show. And I think that's going to be a real interesting <laughs> conversation that she's going to be having she, for the, did she for the ladies. <laughs> nah, nah, nah. <laughs> For the ladies, but for the men too, because it's important for men to understand these conversations as well. So it'll be dope to have, you know, a woman led um, show. Mm. And I'm really looking forward to that for sure. And then also shout out to our guy, Marcus. So we got a chance to talk about that too. We had him on stage and, you know, he's been doing his thing with Recession Proof for a long time. We talk about mergers and acquisitions. So, uh, yeah. It's under the EYL University flag now. So EYL University revamped and we got so much stuff that we're going to be rolling out in 2023. And, um, you know, business, business, business isn't always easy, but it always makes sense if it's good. Um, and collaboration is the only, is the, is the really, the only way to really scale is, there's really no way around it. Going back to the Robert Smith situation. Um, he, became rich doing mergers and acquisitions. He became one of the richest people in the world doing private equity. What do they both have in common? Collaboration. Mergers and acquisitions is when companies merge and, and they acquire other companies. That's the obvious part of the name. Private equity is when you invest in other companies and now you're giving them money and now you have some level of equity in their company. It's yeah. similar to venture capital, but that's collaboration, right? It's like mm -hmm. you're a new startup company. You don't have information. You don't have resources. You come to Vista Capital, which is the name of Robert Smith's company, and they deploy money into your company, and then they deploy leadership, and they give you advice, and they you know oversee the operation. Well, that's collaboration. Can, can mm -hmm. we talk? Can I talk really quickly about some of the mergers and acquisitions? You might have heard it. So, 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 so he's responsible for fifty billion in mergers and acquisitions and activity with companies such as Apple, Microsoft, Texas Instrument, eBay, and Yahoo. Some yeah, he, companies he was might have early. Heard. That was early in his. That, early. Was, that was in his Goldman Sachs days. Early. That was in the Goldman Sachs days. Say those uh, names again, real quick. Apple, Microsoft, Texas Instruments, eBay, and Yahoo. Early on, like home runs grand slams home yeah, grand slams that's early in his career yeah yeah that was early um so yeah it was a great weekend needless to say and um it's been it's been a great year especially for the events so i just want to thank everybody that's that's coming the last three weeks last three weeks we did market mondays live at msg then we did art basel timberland that interview that was amazing. Um, and then we just did Howard University one to end the year at an HBCU. And uh it, it was good to be back in DC. It was good to be at Howard. Um so you wanna announce these next two trips y'all got? Oh no. Not yet, not yet. We, we not still yet. got some, some we got a twenty four surprises. Oh, we still a, few, a few more surprises. Oh, yeah, it's, not, it's not over. Well, I said oh, October first. 
2022 I, is not over yet. October 1st, I say we're going to be making history every day for the rest of the year. And when you say things like that, I mean, it, it's kind of like, you know, it's almost impossible to obtain that type of that type of statement. It just so happened that you do the work <laughs> every week, just so every happened. week, every day, every, I mean, day. Said, every day, yeah, that's every day. But you said the last three weeks, if we take it back to four weeks, I was looking at the, I was on the phone with Ab yesterday. I'm like, yo, you realize like for the past four weeks, we were in Abu mm -hmm. Dhabi. Yeah. We came home and did MSG. Yep. Right. The next week we went, came to Miami and did our Basel. And now we here in DC. Mm -hmm. That's a hell of a month. And yeah. this month, and we still got a few more things in 2022. Yeah, a few more. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, I damn near need a key at the New York Stock Exchange. Metal, like, <laughs> do the work. Everyone keep asking, and I know some of you be like, "Hey, it's hard to work 12 hours." The alternative is to be broke. I was broke for a long time. It's not fun. It is much more fun to make your dreams come true. And a lot of times, it's like a, a quote that I've seen from Andrew Tate and Jordan Peterson a lot, like. uh but the great philosopher Christopher Wallace said it first, being broken 40 will give you chills. Like a lot of the depression and anxiety that men feel right now is from lack of achievement. You will glow more if you are driven by your purpose. I don't know what else to tell you. We've given every piece of information at scale. Um, it's just now up to you to go out and do. I thank you for every recommendation that you guys sent for what you want for Market Mondays in 2023. And we're going to get all the audio and stuff fixed, but people are like, yo, we want LED panels and we want seven interviews and da 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 da. I'm like, bro. And you're going to get it. We're going to get it. One thing. Gonna get it, but, I, but I want you to show how much more be. money you've made. But that's important because we've always delivered the high level of quality. I mean, just if you look at the guests that we've had on Market Monday, you got Mark Cuban, you got um, Rubenstein, you got. Um, no slight to any of them. I've given information that no person on earth gave to the world first. If so, put it in chat where you you yes. know who doesn't think this shit is crazy? Citadel and JP Morgan and Peter and Trade Moss and Piper. Go execute and this and I'm gonna be very honest. Peter was like, why won't more black people listen to you and help you? I want to have a real conversation. Why? All that you guys do, you and Trapper and Swell guy, you know, you know how Peter did. I'm like, <laughs> I don't know. He said, I'm gonna help you. It's it's been a hell of a year, man. Um, it's been a hell of a year. Mm -hmm. Twenty twenty three gonna be crazy though. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be crazy. Um, so <laughs> I think we have one more show left. Are we are we filming the last week? The last week is Christmas. Uh, next week, next week, next week. Last week is the last next, week. Next week is our last one. Take the last week of the year off. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. I can pre-record something. We can, you know, slap something in the beginning and the end. So it's been a hell of a year. Um, I do want to thank everybody for their support because Absolutely. it is important. It is important to do constructive criticism, but it's also important to acknowledge um, the support. And we definitely have gotten a high level of support because we wouldn't be able to, to you know, reach this level of success without without support. Absolutely, so that's extremely important. And support from the viewership support from the guests, support from, you know, people behind the scenes, uh, people that edit videos, yes. uh, shout out to Mike, shout out to Chris, shout out to Nikki, Nikki shout out yes. to Abdullah, shout out to, um, I hate doing these shout outs because you always forget somebody, <laughs> but there's always people that you don't see. That's mm -hmm. extremely helpful and extremely beneficial in the situation. Um, so thank you to all of you guys and um yeah man hopefully you know you watch this show to make money mm -hmm. it's entertaining and it is a form of relief and i understand that because we all need we all need a, a break from our day-to-day -day lives because there's Absolutely. so much stuff that, that goes on so it's important to get that break but it's also important to actually implement the information make some money change the direction of your family yep um and you know really really you know make a dent in this world and um you know having your financial situation together is important because that's going to give you the leverage to actually go out there and you know make political change and make changes in your community and all of that stuff comes down to finances so each one reach one when i get that grace next year 
I promise you huh? by January 1st, I'm going to have that grace. I promise <laughs> you. <laughs> Boy. <laughs> Boy. Oh, wait. Important. The return yeah, on yeah. grace is like 50x, right? 50x. <laughs> and I ain't lost 50X the grace. Great grace. But boy, 50x 50. for the grace? Yes. 50x on the grace, man. 50x on the grace. Yeah, man. Yep. Shout out to y'all. Like you said, shout out to y'all for applying the information. It, it's nothing more gratifying than walking up to people and them telling us, yo, you changed my life, or I yeah. took this information and it changed my life. It's, it's, I mean, it's humbling, and it's like I said, it's the few that keeps us going. It's the reason why every Monday that we are here doing this, because yeah. we know the importance of it. We know people are relying on it, but we know people are sharing on it, so that's part of it, too. Like, you didn't just say, like, I got this information from these guys, and I'm not telling everybody. Every time we meet someone, they're like, yo, I told my cousin, yo, look, I'm sitting yes, down with love. my family. We, this, is, this is our new Monday night thing. So, I mean, we couldn't do this without y'all. So thank you so much for applying the information and sharing the information. And we got some big things planned for Market Mondays in 2023 Ooh. on the event side, yes. on the international event side. So yes. might do a collaborative, a collaborative <laughs> situation with something. You know, I'll I will be back yeah. soon. Hey, Ian, can I give one more shout out? Absolutely. Shout out to Ally. We want to let you know about a great choice if you're looking to bank or invest. Ally is a leading digital financial service company with passionate customer service and innovative financial solutions. And our relentlessly focused on doing it right for both customers and our communities. Get with Ally so you can save, invest, and spend on the things that matter most to you. For everything we need, we're all better off for Ally. And seriously, shout out to Ally. Um, they've been with us all year. Obviously, we did three yeah. events with them. Uh, we had uh, Art Basel. Obviously, we had Fashion Week. And then we were in uh, Austin, Texas for South by Southwest all Three was extremely successful uh, events. Um, it's, it's been a, a great partnership. So sincerely, thank you. And shout out to the team at UM, uh, Ryan and, and John and yeah. everybody that Eden, Dave. Uh, it's been a great, a great, a great partnership in 2022, man. This is how the call gonna go tomorrow. What, what was up with the commentary <laughs> with this is gonna be a shot? You know, that's just Ian. He he passed. We working with him, right? We work, you know, he's passionate about investing. Um, he said it in the show, it's not a reflection of us. That's him. So if you want to renew with us, <laughs> gave you a clear out. Ally, come, come Keep the show you. going. Hey, but uh, I, will say, I have seen the accounts that have been signed up through Ally through me endorsing. Cause I'm not big. I'm, I don't endorse brands that I don't use that don't love. I've seen those signups from red Panda members. I don't know why you guys haven't come back for five years. Um, but I've, I've really enjoyed you and, and the staff is really dope, but even in the media game, I'll tell you guys, this, it's a really good feeling to not need sponsorship. I appreciate the partnership. We want you guys back, but we, I think if we had this impact on this community, um, I don't see why we wouldn't lock in for a long-term partnership. Cause trust me, it's some other non culture based banks that have been reaching out. <laughs> if these numbers come right, caffeine, what's popping? What are we doing? Brendan, my guy, I love you. What are we doing? 2023. Let's get this done. Corey, let's get this done. Apple, let's get this done. What are we doing? A lot of real estate. A lot of real estate. A lot of real estate. And shout out to the UTA family. I love y'all too. I'm going to change the game on that too. I'm going to be signing it way back. But shout out to my CAA family. Cool. Oh, shout out to Terrence J and Megan Good for oh, putting yeah. us putting us in our first movie. Congrats. Be on the lookout, Russ and Drew, coming in 2023. And shout out to Terrence J. It was so crazy because when we was we was on set all day and then we was leaving. And then, you know, they did different wardrobes for different parts of the movie. So they was bringing a jacket, a varsity jacket out for his scene when we was leaving. And I'm like, where y'all get that jacket from? Like, we got it from the mall in Atlanta. Long story short, it was my cousin's clothing brand, Dreams and Night, uh, Beautiful Nightmares. Mm -hmm. Uh, shout out to Reef, and I'm like, yo, y'all just be like, yeah, we just saw it in the store. We just we just purchased it. And, you know, we're gonna wear it in the movie. So, Terrence, I still need that pick. If you have that pick on the video, please, please send. But shout out to Reef, that was dope for me because that was just really a surprise. I'm like, what out? Like, how did y'all get that? So they tapped in. So you never know. Once again, you never know yeah. who's watching. You never know. Just keep working. That's a, that's a, that's a great lesson. And um, but that was a really dope experience for us. Megan Good was just so gracious with, you know, everything. Terrence J, that's our brother. 
Um, so it was one of them no ones. No? <laughs> it was one of them ones, man. I'm, I'm, I'm just one, here to deliver my lines, man. I'm just trying to get Shotty gonna talk. So no more snow. Yeah, I'm just, yeah, I'm <laughs> just here to deliver my lines, man. I, 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 I'm sticking to the script. Yes. <laughs> one of them ones, man. One of Life them ones. Good. New show coming soon. Life is good. Could be worse. Life is good. Shout out to hey. Omar Johnson. Shout out to Umar. Umar Johnson, we need you on high level conversations. Yeah, he actually did it yesterday. Did he? He actually asked about coming on here. Okay. Even well, let's do both. Let's do a two for two. Two for two. Super so. Or let's, let's have three for three. <laughs> Perhaps, perhaps. <laughs> Omar Johnson, I watched. Global, I watched. Entry. I watched that Breakfast Club interview. Um, say what you want about the guy; he's very entertaining. Yes, he's very entertaining. He, he is a big um, draw for sure. And there's a there's a lesson there's a lesson in that. So, what is the lesson in that, Rashad, for the people who are looking to build media brands in 2023? You you have to be able to you have to be captivating. Yes. You have to be able to catch people's attention. Information is just not enough. And that's why the packaging, like somebody was saying, I was talking to somebody like, yo, you throwing on the minks, you're going too far, you're going, you're doing too much. Like you got the airbrush shirt on art Biles, you got the mink. I said, I gotta do that, bro. Gotta do that. You gotta get they gotta get their attention. You gotta put the medicine and the candy and you gotta style on them. But keep in mind, I mean, we've been styling our whole lives. So that's not really too far from real real reality. But it's what well, it's it's costume. You gotta everybody's gotta play a role in this situation. It's like, you know. The Undertaker went out with the whole full fledged thing on, like Randy he, he, Macho Man Randy Savage man. had the thing. So it's his like his manager know, was called Paul Bearer, like, and, and he was hard. really a Paul Bearer. So it's like you know, you gotta, you gotta never underestimate the power of entertainment. This is why it's edutainment, a mix of education and entertainment, and uh, nobody does it better. And but, I'm um, be real, I wish that we wouldn't have to do all this. Like when I'm asking for 200 people to walk out with me with masks and smoke and pyro and all that, like the information is fire enough where it should be, I should be sitting next to the president, not maybe. Yeah. You, right? You, you could. But you have but to you, do both. You got to do both. I do it. Yep. You got to do both. And it's fun too. So it is. it's like, you know, like let's, let's not act like that airbrush, that airbrush shirt cost a bag and those products. <laughs> good luck trying to find those. So it's like, Let's pay homage now, to the trip too. Now Let's pay homage to the trip. Let's pay homage to the trip. See, Rashad went in emo. I'm gonna go on Rashad. <laughs> yes, <laughs> but given the recession, we want to drink. <laughs> Yo, we don't want to spend. Yo. Fiscal spending has been cut. Yes, <laughs> if you were their financial planner, what percentage of money should they spend on clothing? On Yo. trip. This is this is my financial advisor hey, speaking, y'all. Spent ten percent, ten percent tithing, ten percent. You do your do your tithing after your tithing. Business expense, whatever's left. You, you whatever's are, left after your tithing. And, and this is who you guys elected to be your financial black leaders. Josh Brown would never. Uh, never. Love, like, yo. Love, not love, <laughs> love, 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 love. I'm gonna do what Steve Harvey said. I'm a, like, who is it at, the, at, at his crib? I'm gonna do what he say. I'm I'm learning. I'm learning. There's a few people like, but just cuss about them private. Don't they don't need this. <laughs> cool. Yeah, love, man. We're gonna leave with love. Leave with love at Always. all time. All time. But yeah, man, you know, you gotta drip though. It's I don't care if you in old navy. Mm -hmm. Spice it up. Throw the scarf on and tie it up. Crazy. Old Navy? Yeah. Whatever you gotta yeah, do. You probably, you probably, whatever yeah, you gotta probably, do, yeah, like yeah, whatever yeah. your budget, drip on drip. Yeah according to your budget but yeah just style on them because what it is it's a reflection of how you feel about yourself mm -hmm. absolutely that's why i was like you know what i'm saying like i don't care if it was in whatever you shopping at it don't matter but you gotta style on them you do <laughs> water <laughs> hydrate exfoliate yeah. that's it good that's it that's this, it this is the real monday night commentary right here that's it's over liability that's a fact the merch Oh, well, gentlemen, oh, yeah, highest Thank quality you, for, for the package. I got the all black. Oh, toys. yeah, yeah. Shout, shout, shout to Bam, shout to Smitty. They were also in DC. I said, in This DC. Pima, yo, they, they, <laughs> they, uh, they going crazy with the merch right now. Shout out to Bam and Smitty, man. Those, those guys are, you want to talk about work ethic, man. Them dudes, they, they work hard and, um, you know, they're reaping the benefits of that right now. So, shout out to them. Um, and shout out to Smitty. I know he, he went back to, 
uh, Baltimore um, this weekend to see to see the fam, man. So that's always beautiful when you see people reconnecting with their family because they've been so busy throughout the year. So that was dope, man. Shout out to B more. Yeah. yeah, let's go. All right, H U tomorrow. Robert Smith, legendary, big one. Get your notepads ready. Oh yeah, that's education. That's all education right there. So mm-hmm. keep your Instagrams. Keep your Instagram. All you people that was like, oh, you're interviewing all these rappers now. Another okay, one. Okay, 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 okay. Let's get back to this. Let's see it. Let's right, let, let, let make this go viral. Upon your head top. Make this go viral. Upon like your head top. Like Floyd or like, you know what I'm saying? make this go viral. Let's that's see. Let's, let's have a challenge for that. And listen, I, and I say all the time, when I wasn't doing any rant season one, it just had on a glass in the jacket. The viewership was not the same. Neither was a copying, but I was like, we, it sucks that we don't have to do any of this to grow. I didn't even know nobody that was comfortable being black willing to talk about investing in stocks because most people were not doing that shit full time. If so, show me. And if you have, it is no slight to you. I'm not mentioning you because I know some people in the comment going to name like the four people they know. But even for this to be like a cultural phenomenon, which is true, like I said, security ago, I, could, I couldn't find 20 people. Prior, who was like, if you were full time and investing in trading prior to Market Mondays, please put yes in chat. I was. Please stand up. Please. There's stand nobody up. standing up. Look, even well, even from a, shady... from a, from the space from a live event space, right? Even if you didn't know those people, were they able to do live events and put out the numbers? We're talking about real numbers. We're talking about real people in real life, not the people yeah. that yo uh, they may have been supporting or we think they got viewers. No, we're talking about real people that we really see, and they really see us. Every place we, the people always say like, yo, y'all really outside. We really are because we mm-hmm. really are for the people and we made for the people, by the people. And we're going to continue to be that. But Absolutely. as far as the live event space, we're talking about the Apollo. We're talking about the Hobby Center, over 2,500, 3,000 people in Houston. When we come back to New York City, we're talking about over 4,500 people. Real people in real time selling out venues that artists don't do. Like, there's not a, there's not many artists that can get 5,000 people yeah. in the Hulu Center right now. That. Yep. They, they can't. So when you're talking about educate, education and edutainment and we doing these numbers, nah, you never seen it before. And I'm going to be real, just humbly. I don't real know. Real Hopefully somebody will come I'm, and try to trailblaze. We go, I'm, I, I say made this. a lot of y'all step y'all stage show up too. Keep it a thousand. I'm seeing a lot of love. Ian influence shit now. Okay. Ashley, I need two minutes of pyro. I'll pay my own insurance. That's a, that's a voice. I need to show. come down from... Like Sting, right? Helicopter. And that's just Let's stop acting like it's an everyday thing. That pyro's real. We kick it. I said this. We are kicking down doors, Door. right? But when we kick down a door, it's not for you to walk through. It's for you to build a building, yes. right? So let's just keep building buildings and building build. That's that's community. That's how we take over, man. Y'all got so that the further we go, down, the further man. the whole the whole space goes. So let's keep pushing this thing forward. All right, y'all. Peace. Peace. Peace.